let's talk about first of all like software defined networking what is this what comes under this software defined networking and then we will talk about the the content later on so first of all what is this software defined networking software defined networking is software defined approach to manage the lan and wan environment of a campus area network a branch a data center so uh, traditional networks traditional uh, networking where we uh, you know uh, add on routers where we add on switches and other uh, appliances in our infrastructure and we do the management of all those devices we do the configurations on all those devices uh, one by one it actually adds a lot of challenges a lot of uh, administrative overhead uh, and you know a lot of uh, configuration related challenges a lot of security related challenges a lot of deployment related challenges a lot of challenges are there when we design our network and when we want to configure a network from the scratch right so what they did actually they introduced this they introduced this uh, uh, they introduced this software defined networking where where some piece of software is going to take the intent uh, uh, from the admin and the software is going to configure the network devices as per the defined intent so as the administrator all we had to tell that okay this is what we want to do this is what we want the network to look like and then there that software defined networking that software defined uh, like the, the 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 controller that we have in our software defined networking will be able to uh, configure will be able to push the intent onto those devices so basically software defined networking is software defined approach to manage the lan and wan environment of a network like we have a lan devices in our infrastructure we want to manage those lan devices from a centralized point that can be done with the help of this software defined networking also in our infrastructure we have some wan edge devices which are responsible to connect our infrastructure network to the uh, to the to the known and unknown networks known networks such as our data center our headquarter our branches and unknown networks such as for example internet so when we want to connect our lan and wan infrastructure we uh, like we want to manage our lan and wan infrastructure with the help of some 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 software or with the help of some some we call that controller in terms of sdn that terminology that overall concept is what we call as software defined networking so in short software defined networking is a, a way to configure our lan and wan infrastructure with the help of some controller with the help of some software some piece of software and that software will be running on some 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 device that device is what we are going to call as a controller so software defined net, in in the software defined networking the administrator is going to uh, you know define its intent what it wants to do what what they what they want the network to look like and then that piece of software that controller is going to configure the devices based on the intent that the administrator that the network engineer has actually configured right and why this is done why this is this all is being done why this software defined networking is has been introduced in the market we will talk about all that you know we'll talk about like what are different different challenges uh, that we face in the modern day network and because of that uh, they had to introduce this software defined networking but just to give you the idea uh when when we talk about software defined networking we talk about software defined networking in three places we talk about software defined networking in three places we talk about software defined networking in a data center environment we talk about a software defined networking in a lan campus area network like in a campus area network in the lan side of that campus area network we talk about sdn software defined networking at that place and we talk about software defined networking in our uh, wide area network like when we want to connect our branches headquarter data center to the wan internet public internet private uh, transport such as mpls and all so when we talk about that uh, uh, it is like implementing software defined networking in wan so modern day modern day networks like modern day software defined networking specifically when we talk about this cisco software defined networking Cisco has introduced software defined networking in a data center environment on the lan and for the wan Cisco has solution for SDN like Cisco has a SDN solution Cisco has a software defined networking solution for the data center Cisco has a software defined uh, networking solution for the lan environment of a campus area network and Cisco has software defined networking uh, solution SDN solution for a campus wan wide area network 
So what is this, uh, what, what solution Cisco has when it comes to managing the WAN edge devices of a branch of a campus area network? We call that uh, software defined WAN or SD WAN in brief. So SD WAN or software defined wide area network. So SD WAN gives us a uh, capability to uh, manage all the WAN edge devices of our campus of our network from one centralized point, or we say with the help of the controller. So SD WAN, software defined wide area network, SD WAN is something that Cisco has. Cisco uh, as the SDN solution for the WAN edge devices is what we call as SD WAN. SD WAN gives us the capability. SD WAN gives us the capability to manage all the WAN edge devices from a centralized point. And by manage, I mean, of course, manage, configure, you know, deploy, and all those things like we can do from one centralized point. That is what we call uh, that is that solution is referred to as uh, SD WAN. Now, Cisco offers two SD WAN. Cisco offers SD WAN based on a Meraki, and Cisco offers SD WAN based on Viptela. So Viptela was a company which was uh, Viptela was a company that was uh, you know that 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 gave the SD WAN solution uh, for the modern day network. Cisco acquired Viptela, and now it has become like Cisco SD WAN Viptela, or just commonly known as Cisco SD WAN. So uh, SD WAN solution is is there to manage all the WAN as devices from a centralized point. Uh, Meraki is typically for the small scale network and medium to large scale network. They go for like Viptela. Now, the software-defined approach to manage the LAN infrastructure of a campus area network is what is defined as SD Access or SDA, which is our course focus, which is what we are going to cover uh, here in our content. So what is this SD Access? What is this SDA? SDA is software-defined approach to manage the uh, LAN infrastructure of a network. Like in our LAN, we have a few switches. These switches are all connected with let's say for example some uh, this is these are access layer switches these are connected with some distribution layer switches then we have core switches uh these these are going towards the routers like known network and known network you know we can design the network as per our requirement so sda software defined access is is an approach to manage the uh, lan devices these switches that we have in our infrastructure uh, from one centralized point SDA, software defined access, is where a piece of software, a controller, is going to manage uh, and configure all the LAN devices of the infrastructure. And by the LAN devices, I mean switches. Switches, mostly switches. So SDA is what we are going to cover. And Cisco provides this SDA solution based on a controller, that, hard, that piece of uh, hardware that we must have to implement this uh, uh, SDA solution is called DNA, Digital Network Architecture, so DNA Center. So the entire SD-WAN solution is built around this controller called DNA Center or DNAC for, uh, you know, in brief, like if you say DNAC, DNA Center. Now, Cisco earlier, before this DNA Center came into the existence, Cisco already had uh, in a data center network, they already had things such as ACI, application-centric infrastructure. A data center is built around the application. A data center network is built around the application, around the service that that data center actually provides. So to manage a data center uh, in, a, in, a, in a software-defined way, they had this uh, concept of ACI-centric, uh, application-centric infrastructure. They had this ACI data centers. Right, and the controller that they used to use in this ACI infrastructure was called EPIC, Application Policy Infrastructure Controller. Software-defined networking has been there in the market for a very long time, like specifically in the data center environment where we had this concept of ACIs, application-centric infrastructure, uh, and the controller that is used in that ACI infrastructure is called EPIC, Application Policy Infrastructure Controller. This EPIC controller, this application policy infrastructure controller is the controller for ACI. So if you want to manage our data center infrastructure uh, in a, in a, you know, uh, with the help of this software defined networking, we should, we have to go for this ACI EPIC solution. Software defined networking in a data center environment has been there like for a, for a very long time. 
and they thought, why don't we introduce this same software defined networking in our campus area network? Why don't we actually introduce this uh, software defined networking to manage the LAN and WAN devices of the campus area network? So Cisco did create uh, things such as IWAN, intelligent WAN, uh, before this SD WAN came into the picture. They had this thing called IWAN, intelligent WAN, built around the same concept of software defined wide area network. For the, for the LAN infrastructure to manage the LAN devices of the campus area network, they had this concept of, they implemented, they configured, they created a controller uh, for a campus local area network, and that was labeled as EPIC EM, Application Policy Infrastructure Controller EPIC Enterprise Module. They actually created this EPIC EM. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about this. But they created this EPIC EM application policy infrastructure controller enterprise module. They created this EPIC EM so that the LAN devices of the uh, you know campus area network can be managed uh, with the help of this controller. Same concept that they had, for example, in their data center environment. They 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 they, they took this they took the inspiration from this EPIC controller. That since EPIC controller is very good for the data center environment to manage all the DC devices, to manage the ACI infrastructure from a centralized point, we have this EPIC. Why don't we introduce this same concept in a campus area network? So they, they created this EPIC EM, which was supposed to uh, be a software defined controller, which, is, which, which, which was supposed to be a controller for software defined networking in a campus local area network. But unfortunately, uh, you know, it didn't gain that much popularity. It, 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 people deployed it. No, 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 no doubt people deployed it, but they understood that oh, uh, we, we might need to redesign the entire local area network uh, around this Epic EM controller. So they, they didn't deploy this Epic EM uh, that uh, widely or that uh, uh, like this, this controller was not that much popular as this ACI Epic concept was there in the data center environment. They also had launched uh, things such as PIE prime infrastructure. They had a lot of controllers actually. We'll talk about a few, but they launched a lot of controller. They were trying to push this software defined networking in a campus area network for a, for a, they have been trying to do that for a very long time. They had this uh, prime infrastructure um, uh, for the, for the, for the campus area network as well. But later on, you know, when SD-WAN gained the popularity in like, you know, uh, I believe I am training for SD-WAN for 2019. So 16, 17, when, when, when SD-WAN came into the market, when SD-WAN started gaining a lot of popularity, what they did actually, they repurposed this Epic EM. They repurposed this Epic EM and they launched it with the name of DNA Center or DNAC appliance. Half of this DNA, DNA center appliance is in fact Epic EM. Like the, when we talk about the hardware of the DNA center, we'll, we'll, we'll see all these things in detail. But DNA center has two components. One of the component is entirely like this Epic EM. They repurposed this Epic EM when the software defined networking, you know, it, it, it gained some popularity in the market uh, back in 15, 16 at that time. I think in 17, they acquired Viptela. I'm not really sure about it. But when this uh, software defined networking started gaining a lot of popularity, they repurposed this Epic EM appliance and they, they launched it with the name of uh, uh, DNA Center. And what, 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 what was added actually? This like DNA Center had all the functionalities of that Epic EM plus assurance function. Assurance is a way of you know monitoring all these things from a centralized point, give predictions and everything. So Epic EM plus Assurance, half of the part of this DNA center is exactly the same as the Epic EM, and they added the Assurance functionality in that particular uh, Epic EM controller, and they launched it with the name of the DNA center. They launched it with the name of this DNA center, which is, which is sold as a hardware appliance, uh, which is sold as a hardware appliance, and based on your requirement, you can go for a medium, large, or extra large appliance uh, uh, based on you know, based on your your infrastructure, we'll talk about the hardware later on. Right. 
Now, DNA Center has a lot of things. If you go through the graphical user interface of the DNA Center, it has a lot of things. Why I'm telling you all this? Because I want to clear it that we are not going to cover the DNA Center. This class is not about DNA Center. This class is about SDA. This class is about software defined access. This class is about one part of the DNA Center. We are going to go through the graphical user interface of the DNA Center. We will be seeing the options on the DNA Center, but this class is not going to be focused on the DNA Center. This class is focused on this class is focused on SDA. Anurag, we will talk about that. We'll talk about like why do we use it? We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. I'm just giving you the idea, like you know, why uh, what they have done, uh, like what they have done to introduce the software defined networking in the in the campus area network. We'll talk about that. Definitely we'll talk about that, the use cases and everything. Now, meanwhile, we go through like you know, when when we talk about the content, we'll be going through the components and everything, you know, how the end-to-end -end solution is there. You know, just in case, just in case if you guys want to explore, like you know, we will be covering it in, in, in our content, but just in case if you guys want to explore what is this DNA center. And see, what is this DNA center? What is this, uh, you know, uh, how the graphical user interface looks like? You can explore that all by yourself without any, um, you know, uh, extra, you know, without purchasing any hardware or so. See, SDA software, uh, just to, just to, just to uh, tell you the difference, SDA software defined approach, SDA software defined access is software defined approach to manage the campus local area network LAN devices. In short, SDA is an SDA is a software defined approach to manage the campus LAN switches. DNA Center is the appliance. DNA Center is that hardware appliance which is responsible, which, which does that management. You know, DNA Center appliance is actually it does that uh, that that management. And the, the point I'm trying to make is that DNA Center is not uh, DNA Center is not uh, uh, going to DNA Center has a lot of other functionalities as well. DNA Center, Cisco DNAX, Cisco DNA Center has a lot of other functionalities as well. We are just going to focus on the software defined access as the functionality of that particular DNA Center. DNA Center is the controller that is used in the software defined access technology in the SDA technology, Cisco SDA is built with the help of this DNA Center. DNA Center is a component used in the Cisco SDA. It is a hardware used in the, uh, you know, SDA, Cisco SDA solution. Yes, it is a controller used in Cisco software defined access solution. We'll talk about that in detail. Right. Uh, no, Kripta, this is... Uh, uh, this 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 slides and everything will get available by today, right? Uh, these are still not available. I will I will I will keep it up. I will I will upload all these today. Right. So what I was saying that just in case if you want to explore what is this DNA center, how does it look like, what is the graphical user interface, all you need to do is just go to this uh, D Cloud. Go to this. Just visit this Cisco D Cloud. Just search D Cloud on Google. Just go to the Cisco D Cloud. Or uh, like uh, log in with your Cisco ID. If you do not have a Cisco ID, just create a Cisco ID. It is completely free. There is no charge for the same. Just log in with your Cisco ID. I will log in with my Cisco ID. Just give me a second. I will log in with my Cisco ID. Just give me a second. Once you have logged in with your Cisco ID, once you have, uh, you know, once you have uh, logged in with your Cisco ID, You know, it will open something like that. Right. It will open something like that. This is this is this is where you will you will land on. Right. Now. What you what you can do, you can do go to this catalog option here. Just go to this catalog option here, right? Under this catalog option, you can just click on this D cloud. You can click on this instant demo. It will filter out a few things. And here you can search 
you can search for DNA center here, right here. You can in the search catalog option, you can search for the DNA center or you can scroll down and you will see this is instant demo for different, different products that Cisco launches. Like for example, this is for SD-WAN 20.9. Just in case if you want to get your hands on the SD-WAN solution, just in case if you want to see uh, the SD-WAN, you can just uh, just visit this uh, visit this one, you know. So what we want to do we, here, for example, if you scroll down Cisco DNA Center Automation and Assurance version 2.3.3.4 instant demo, right? I will click on this one, right? I will click on this view button from here. It will open a new page, right? And it, it, it effectively, like eventually, it will just open a, 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 a user interface for the DNA center. So what Cisco has done, they have they must have deployed a DNA center onto the onto the onto their premises, and they are giving us uh, some sort of cloud access so that we can explore, uh, you know, this Cisco DNA center appliance. This is the graphical user interface of that particular Cisco DNA center appliance, right? So how you are going to log in, what is the username and password and everything. So you can just uh, click on this resources tab right here. Under the resources tab, you can get like uh, uh, segment use case, analytics demo, assurance demo guide, and all these different, different guides are there. If I click on this uh, assurance demo guide, if I click on that, it will open a document. In that document, there will be a username and password, right? So just scroll down, scroll down, you know, you should have a laptop and everything, procedure, Chrome browser, view. But this is the password. This is demo username and password is demo1234 exclamation mark. So I will log in with my password, username, password, demo, demo1234 and exclamation mark. And it will allow me to log in. And this is the graphical user interface. This is the GUI of the DNA center. This is how, this is where you will land on once you install the DNA center in your infrastructure. And now from here, from this controller, from this uh, 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 this device itself, you will be able to manage your campus area network from one single, from one centralized point, right? This is the front page of the, the Cisco DNA Center appliance, right? Uh, we'll, we'll set up the Cisco DNA Center appliance from the scratch. So it looks like they have already set up this Cisco DNA Center appliance. They have approximately 121 network devices in this DNA center connected. They have like approximately 62 sites created. They have different, different software images. They have different, different policies and everything. They have 105 DNA license devices and all. They have, they have like a lot of things uh, that can, that can be, uh, that can be seen right here on the front page. Everything, everything that you want to do everything you want to design your network you can design your network from here you want to create the policies you can create the policies from here you want to do some uh, configuration see what we are talking about what we are this is the dna center appliance what we are talking about in our content we are talking about this sda sda software defined access is something that we get in this dna center dna center is a hardware appliance that can does a lot of things it can does a lot of things. It, it can do this. It can do a lot of things. It can do a lot of things. So what we are going to focus on, we can, we are going to focus on this individual part, this individual SDA part, software defined access part of this DNA center appliance. Right. Then we have this assurance. Then we have different, different workflows. Then like we have, this is the, this is what we can do in this DNA center. We have different, different tools. We have uh, like developer toolkits, we have what, whatever things are done, logs and everything in the backends. So these are all the things that we can generate the reports, we can change the system settings. A lot of things are there in this DNA center appliance. So these are what we call workflow, design workflow, policy workflow, provision workflow, assurance workflow. Like these are four major workflows in this DNS center appliance where we can design our network, we can apply some sort of policy, we can we can provision and configure the devices in our infrastructure, we can monitor the health of the network and everything. So assurance, assurance is more like monitoring, right? So you can monitor the overall health of the network and just like, you know, we have that, uh, that net flow thing uh, in, in our infrastructure. So we have this uh, uh, assurance dashboard in our DNA center that gives us the idea about the overall network, clients, application, 
services running in the network everything everything basically you can actually uh, you know uh, the in the assurance you will get the more like a monitoring thing uh, about everything from here actually this is this is this is the cisco dna center you can explore it as much you want and uh, you will be using this cisco dna center uh, to do uh, the tasks that we are going to do in our lab we have a dna center here on our premises since it is sold only as a hardware device uh, they said that they are going to launch a software software dna center as well and they have done it uh, i think they will release a document soon uh, for this dna center deployment on the cloud in a virtualized environment such as esxi or uh, let's say for example uh, aws cloud but yet at the moment there is no documentation regarding uh, how can we deploy this dna center on the esxi right so at the moment you just need to you can just explore all the functions everything from here from this and you can you can create the things it's not like it's only view only it it's like you have read and write both access so for example you want to create a site you can create a site you want to create a policy you can create a policy you want to provision the device you can provision the device you can configure the devices from here itself you will be using this cisco dna center this d cloud dna center to explore everything that we are going to talk about in our classes so i will highly recommend that you go to this cisco d cloud you just uh, you know uh, check this uh, uh, link and try to explore just in case if you want try to explore these options we will be doing throughout the content we will be going through all these workflows design workflow where we are going to design our sites policy workflow where we are going to create our policies provision workflow where we are going to configure our network and assurance where we are going to do the monitoring everything we are going to do we will talk about all these uh, workflows as a part of our content remember we are not going to go through each and every option just to make it very clear we are not going to go through each and every option we will focus on the software defined access part of this dna center we will focus specifically on the things uh, that comes under sda part in our software defined network right dna center is a like is a very heavy product like it it, it can do a lot of things but what we will be doing will be focusing on the sda part of it right so this is a controller that you had to purchase and deploy in your infrastructure and you had to connect all the devices with this dna center and then dna center is going to manage all those devices from one single point from one centralized point right so we will be talking about we'll be talking about this throughout the content right um somehow it is like uh, um somehow it is it is a controller you know that that manages all the switches of your infrastructure from one centralized point you can compare it with the, with 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 different uh, solutions that you might have seen in your production environment for example epic application policy infrastructure controller for the you know aci network for the data center network it gets that has the same type sort of gui but uh, there we can do the management of the data center network from one centralized point this is for more this is more for a, a campus area network in 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 our infrastructure right now the content that we are going to cover like i said is purely going to be focused on sda software defined access and they cisco already has launched a book for the same there is a official certification guide however there is no official certificate for the same there is no official course for this sda right there is no official course for software defined access there is no like uh, for example for the sd wan certification they have a like e n s d w i this is this is the uh, exam code for like uh, um, sd wan but for the sda they do not have any you know uh certification program yet most probably they will launch it soon but uh, uh, somewhere you might see this ensda uh, this is for only for uh, for like employees and all but not for us actually so cisco has not launched any official uh, certification uh, uh, what we say track for this cisco software defined access yet they might do it later on but at the moment there is nothing 
however there is a there is a book that you can read that you can go through uh, to study uh, this entire software defined access part right and this is this is that book uh, this book uh, you will i will upload it this book i will upload this book onto the portal and you can actually uh, you know uh, download it or you can go through this book this is actually available on the portals nowadays so it's not a big deal uh, this book actually came before the sdwan book like you know so this software defined access this sda uh, book you can download you can read everything about the sda from here it's it's it's, it's the only book that you get from the cisco press and they they all they have like a lot of guides as well like deployment guide migration guide configuration guide they have all different different guides as well but the official certification guide is this one all right so if you scroll down you will notice what things you should know when it comes to the software defined access part these are the things that you are supposed to know under our sda and our pptes our documents are completely based on uh, the same uh, official certification guide that we have so first chapter just to give you the brief idea what is today's network and what are the drivers of the changes like what what are the challenges in the modern day network why we need to introduce the software defined networking in our day to day environment introduction to software defined networking introduction to the dna center sda fundamental ice identity services with cisco dna center when it comes to the components of the cisco like uh, when it comes to the component of cisco sda you know uh, the components of the cisco sda one is dna center which is the controller then we have identity services engine or is to deploy the policies and all and third if you have like uh, uh, access point then we have this thing called wireless lan controller so three major components are there to build our sda environment when we have like dna center when we have is and just in case if we have the access points to manage all those access points from a centralized point we have this fabric wlc you know when when we design our sda network for sda this uh, dna center can manage both wired and wireless infrastructure there is a single controller for wired and wireless infrastructure so uh, just in case if you have a uh, wireless devices access points and all you can manage those wireless devices access points and all with the help of this dna center appliance as well so there you will require wlc otherwise you will not require the wlc for example in our content we are not going to see the Uh, wireless lan controller this wlc this wireless part in that detail i will tell you i will show you uh, how we can enable the uh, wireless in our dna center appliance and all but we will not be discussing that in very detail it is specifically content of enterprise wireless like you know not enterprise infrastructure so how to integrate ice with the dna center what things we can do from the ice to the dna center then how as the operates how can we do basic troubleshooting advanced as the topics and advanced dna center topics and then at the end we have the assurance so overall four five chapters are there these are just you know repeated chapters again and again this one then this one it's it's actually it's it's exactly the same just they have added a few more concepts into that right so there are only four and five chapters uh, that you need to go through completely Uh, to get the whole idea of this is called dna center so this is this is the official certification guide that we will be taking as a reference uh, for our classes this is this is what you will get this is what you will go through uh, to get a better understanding of our sda infrastructure right here they have talked about all the things like uh, what is modern day network what are the challenges and all uh, what solutions is co proposed before the SDA? before this dna center and all so they have talked about that in very much detail uh, we'll talk we'll we'll try to cover as much as as possible from this certification guide but uh, for more details you can always refer to these uh, documents apart from that you also have a different different uh, uh, guides publicly available on the cisco's website like deployment guide migration guide uh, getting started guide configuration like a uh, command guide different different guides are there that we can refer to that we will be going to refer uh, throughout the content right so uh, that book you will get uh, either on the portal and just in case if you don't get that on the portal i will share you the link to download it by tomorrow uh, after you know confirming let's see how many people will still be there by tomorrow 
right? So that is the book that we are going to use as a reference. Okay. Any any question? Anyone so far? If you have, we have just talked about like it is just the basic introduction. Any question? Anyone? If we if we have, like, let me know. Anyone? We will. Uh, otherwise, we will start the content. We have a topology. Uh, this DNS enter solution is completely focused on hardware topology. So we have to do the labs on the hardware. Like we have some switches. We have some 9300 series switches. We have some 3800 series switches. We have the DNS enter appliance. We have IEs. We have WLC. So we have created a lab here in our premises. I will be using that lab for the uh, for the demonstration purpose. And you guys will be using that, you know, D cloud to repeat all those things that we will be doing. Right. Uh, documents and everything, uh, as usual, you will get from the from the portal, the slides and everything you will get in a, a soft copy format from the portal. I don't think like you will be able to download it, but the slides will be uploaded onto the portal so that you can refer it uh, as per your requirement. Right. Keep in mind that uh, there is no certification exam for the DNA center for this Cisco SDA yet. Anything anyone wants to ask? Otherwise, we can begin with our content. We can start the content. Any questions so far? Anyone? I have just given you given you the brief idea. Like, what is this? Uh, why, like, what is the software defined networking in different, different places? Now we will talk about like the need of the software defined networking. Right. So I think we should start. I will upload this. I will get this uh, PPT uploaded by today itself. You know, after today's class, like uh, I will, I will get this uploaded so that you can practice on the same. Uh, Aero, Aero is, uh, WCs are supported. Actually, uh, we will talk about that. Uh, they are supported. Some wave one, wave two, like access points are supported. Uh, Cat OS is also supported. But uh, that has to be checked from the compatibility matrix. So whatever devices you are going to manage from the DNA center, they has to be from the compatibility matrix. We will be able to check that. We'll be able to check that, you know, what devices are compatible with the version of the DNA center that you are deploying based on a portal, based on a, uh, based on a compatibility portal that they have created. So from there, you will get the exact information, but some are supported. Some ROS uh, devices are supported. Uh, not not all of them. Some wave one, wave two access points, WLCs are supported, but not all of them. Uh, no, no, it is uh, Dushant. It is not going to be a spine lift topology. It is just going to be our you know traditional three tier, two tier architecture for a campus network, right? Uh, and this is not just for the management. This is for management configuration, uh, policy application, a lot of things. A lot of things. Main is management like overall if you call that management so main it is for management but that management will include things such as configuration provisioning uh, monitoring all the things like uh, the policy deployment and everything from one centralized point right and uh, it is not going to be based on the spine lift topology like you know this is a spine lift topology is specifically for the data center environment and in that data center environment, we do have the controller named as EPIC, Application Policy Infrastructure Controller. So uh, that is going to manage that DC infrastructure. Uh, here, we are going to have our traditional two-tier, three-tier architecture. Uh, the, the point is that that two-tier, three-tier architecture can be managed from this centralized controller named DNA. Right then, so let's start at least uh, the basic things. Uh, no, this controller is not the control plane, no. This is not a control plane device. We'll talk about these architectural planes, but no, this is not a control plane. Uh, unlike, unlike that uh, uh, Cisco SD WAN solution, unlike that Cisco SD WAN solution, where we have a different controller for control plane, a different controller for the data, uh, like a management plane. No, it's not like that. 
So let's talk about the challenges that we have in a modern day network. Right. So there are, uh, as they say, that there are many challenges in today's network. There are many challenges in the modern day network uh, managing the network. There are many challenges in uh, today's uh, infrastructure in managing the network because of manual configuration and fragmented tool offering. So when it comes to the configuration uh, on the network devices in a modern day network, we can use different different tools to manage to uh, configure our our devices but different different companies they utilize different different tools for the same purpose so there are like a lot of tools available that you can use uh, to manage uh, your infrastructure in a modern day network if you are joining a company they will be using a set of tools to manage that infrastructure if you are joining the other company they must be using some other tools to manage the same type of network so there are different different tools in modern day network to manage the network uh, uh, devices and uh, there there still has to be like configuration done by the administrator manually like if you have to for example uh, deploy a couple of branches you can deploy the devices onto those branches and you will be doing the configurations on those devices manually or someone uh, uh like from the network operation teams or the security operation teams is going to do the configuration on those devices by taking maybe telnet ssh or local management uh, they will be uh, doing the configuration all by them, all by all by themselves. So, uh, because of manual configuration and fragmented tool offering, there are a lot of challenges in the modern day uh, network. Manual configurations, manual operations are slow, error prone, and they are proving to be uh, very ineffective for a modern day network. Like where we have a lot of devices, where we have different different types of data. We have data uh, like normal data, we have voice, we have video, we have data going to the cloud, we have data going to the data centers, we have data going to the internet, public internet. So uh, to handle those different different types of data, we might be using different different types of tools, we might be using different different types of policies, and all those policies have to be configured by the administrator manually onto the devices. Assuming that we have like, for example, 10, 20, 50 devices, uh, you might need to configure all those devices um, yourself to enforce all those uh, policies, all those configurations uh, on those devices. So manual operations, manually configuring the devices, manual uh, configuration uh, like operations, they are slow. They are very prone to error. Like if the administrator is doing some configuration and he is just copy pasting the configuration from one device to other device, even that is going to have uh, some that might uh, have some problems as well. Maybe, for example, you want to configure BGP on all these the devices and you just uh, uh, configured BGP on one of the device and you just copied the configuration of the BGP and you just pasted all those configurations on here and you forgot to change the router ID. Just an example. So manual configurations that we do in our production environment on all the devices, they are very much prone to errors. Like uh, uh, human errors, chances of human errors are uh, more as compared to uh, this software defined networking in a production environment. If you do the configurations manually, those configurations are more prone to errors. And they are proving to be very ineffective in a, in a, in a it is not a very effective uh, way to manage the, uh, the campus area network to manage the data center infrastructure uh, uh, manually. It is, it is proving to be very ineffective in a, in a modern day network. With the growth of the users and different devices types coming into the network, earlier the device types, when we talk about the device types, earlier we used to have like servers, or we, earlier we used to have like desktops, laptops, but nowadays we have mobile phones, we have IoT devices, we have different different types of devices in a modern day network. Not only just the static devices, not only, uh, not only the devices that are placed at a certain location, uh, but we do have uh, devices with roaming capabilities, such as we have our mobile phone, and I can access the infrastructure of with that mobile phone anytime we want. So the point is that in a modern day network, uh, we have different different types of devices. There are different different types of devices coming into the network. Like we have devices such as laptop, desktop, server, IoT devices, and a lot of devices are there in a modern day network. All those devices are generating different different types of traffic. We have sensors and all in our production environment. We might have different different types of sensors and uh, sensors as well. And all those devices are generating different different types of data. There are to manage that uh, different different types of devices. We might be having different different types of user. 
So an administrator need to configure the credentials on the devices so that uh, those devices can be managed by the appropriate uh, administrators. So with the growth of the users, with the growth of the users and different devices types, different device types coming into the network, configuring the user credential and maintaining a consistent policy across the network for both wired and wireless is getting more and more complex. Modern day, modern day infrastructure is not only based on wired, but it is also based on this wireless infrastructure. Like we have wired and wireless, both type of infrastructure in our, in our um, campus area network nowadays. Wireless has gained a lot of popularity. So uh, the infrastructure is not only built around the wired infrastructure, but we also introduce the concept of wireless in the same infrastructure that gives us a lot of advantages such as roaming facility. User can take its laptop and user can roam from one point to other point and it, the user will still be connected to the network and the user will still be able to manage the network from any point in, 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 in any point in that, uh, uh, in that locality. So configuring a policy for the wired infrastructure versus configuring a policy for the wireless infrastructure, configuring the policy for the, uh, for the voice traffic, for the data traffic, for the video traffic, for the IoT devices. Uh, it is getting more and more complex in the modern day network. So with the growth of users and different types of devices, such as computer, laptop, tablets, IoT devices, sensors, and all, uh, configuring, configuring the user credentials and maintaining a consistent policy across the network for both wired and wireless network is getting more and more complex. The rate at which changes are happening, they, is, they exceed the human scale. The rate at which changes are happening in a, in a, in a, in a modern day network, they, it, it exceeds the human scale. Like uh, we, we, we might not be having like enough uh, resources to uh, handle the rate at which the changes are happening uh, in a, in a modern day uh, network. Let it be the data center network, let it be the campus area network, let it be any type of network. If I, if I, for example, if I, uh, overall, if I, for example, uh, categorize all these challenges into, let's say, for example, two different uh, parts, I can categorize all these challenges. I can categorize all these challenges that we have in our infrastructure in, into uh, two different parts. There are challenges uh, imposed in our network uh, based on this, these uh, network operations. And there are challenges that we will that we will face in the infrastructure. There are challenges that we will face in our infrastructure. Uh, those challenges will be uh, based on the security of the in, uh, like the network, right? So it says that there are different different types of challenges. Those challenges can be categorized as network operation challenges and uh, security operations related challenges. Right. For example, it just 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 to give you the just to give you the brief idea. Just to give you, let's say, for example, the uh, the brief idea. Like we have deployed our network. We have deployed our network, and uh, in that network, a few users, some users are complaining that they are not able to access the network resources. Some users, some users are claiming that they are not able to access a particular network resources. Uh, we have deployed our infrastructure. Everything was working fine the last day, but uh, the next day when I, when we came into the office, someone, some people are like 30, 40 employees are reporting that they are not able to access the network resources. We might now need, uh, so we, we need to perform some sort of troubleshooting. You know, we have to analyze what is the, what is the, you know, uh, what is the cause of that particular problem. And we might, if you have, for example, in our network, we have, let's say, for example, uh, five, six devices. It will be easy uh, to perform the troubleshooting on those five, six devices. But if you have like 10, 20 devices in your infrastructure, you might need to access the switches. You might need to access the router. You might need to access the firewall. You might need to access different, different appliances to perform the troubleshooting. This is an example of a operation related challenge that you might face in your production environment. Right. So you might, for example, you, you, you might need to check the logs and based on the logs, you will conclude, for example, 
based on the logs, you will conclude that, oh, the HTTP pool got exhausted. Because of that, the users are not getting the IP. And that is why they are not able to access the network resources. So basically, you will you will go through the logs, you will analyze the entire network, you will go through, uh, you will, you will, you will, you might need to take the access on the devices and all. And then uh, you will conclude that okay, this is this is the reason why uh, the devices are not able to access the uh, resources, the users are not able to access the resources. This is just one example of the uh, deployment rated challenges. Uh, sorry, operational config, uh, like network operation rated challenges. If we have to perform, for example, deployment of a devices, let's say we have to deploy a new device in our, if we have to deploy a new device, or if we have to deploy a new branch, if we have to deploy, uh, you know, a new headquarter, if we have to deploy new devices to maybe in the branches or in the headquarter or in any other network, uh, we need to do some configurations on those devices uh, manually before we can deploy that device in the in the production environment. Right. So when we have to deploy like 1020 devices, for example, in the infrastructure, doing the configurations manually is also going to be impose a lot of deployment related challenges. We might need to uh, see where that device is going to be placed. And based on that uh, location, we might need to apply. We must, we might uh, want to apply the ACLs. We might need to apply. We might want to apply some other uh, cold security or other uh, security related uh, uh, configurations onto that device, maybe. So when you have to, for example, deploy a new device, it is also going to impose a few uh, challenges for you. In your company, you have both wired and wireless network. Like your company has both wired and wireless network. How you are going to create a policy for your wired infrastructure and how you are going to create the policies for the wireless infrastructure and who is going to manage all those policies. There is going to be a dedicated team maybe to manage all the policies related to the wired infrastructure. And there is going to be a dedicated team, uh, for example, to manage the wireless infrastructure, to manage all those policies, for example, uh, regarding the wireless infrastructure. So to like we will we will face we will face some management uh, uh, challenges as well. We will we will face some challenges based of uh, uh, for this uh, wired and wireless network management as well. Like if some user that is connected uh, via wired network is reporting a problem, we might need to troubleshoot. We might need to uh, inspect our wired infrastructure to find out the problem. And if some user uh, which is on a wireless in wireless network, which is connected to the network in a wireless fashion, if he or she is reporting the problem, we might need to troubleshoot the things uh, based on that wireless topology, that wireless infrastructure that we have created. So the point is, uh, like if you have both wired and wireless infrastructure in your network, you will face uh, the challenges uh, in managing the wired and wireless infrastructure as well. So there are different different challenges that you will face when it comes to the uh, network operations. Like you will face a lot of challenges, like operational challenges, deployment challenges, management challenges. You will face different different challenges uh, in your day-to-day uh, -day, um, network operations. And more importantly, you will face challenges um, uh, based on the security. For example, in your company, you have different different uh, uh, departments. You have, let's say, Department X, Department Y, Department Z. And these, de these departments are allowed to access uh, certain types of devices, like Department X only has the access to these devices, Department Y only has access to these devices, and Department Z only has access to these devices. How we are going to uh, secure our network in such a way, for example, uh, that these, uh, this department doesn't get the access of these devices or this device, how we are going to uh, create a policy, uh, a security related policy in such a way that, for example, devices in this department or users in this department are not allowed to communicate with the users in this department. Let's say, for example, we have a switch. On this switch, we have connected to user. This is one user which belongs to one department. This is another user which belongs to another department. And I want this user uh, should not be able to communicate with this user. I can create as simple as a VLAN onto this particular switch. I can put this in one VLAN. I can put this in another VLAN and they will not be able to talk to each other. As simple as that. 
if I want to control uh, what user can access what resources in our infrastructure, we can create things such as access control list, where we can match on different different parameters. We can match on source IP, destination IP, source port number, destination port number. We can match uh, based on those uh, uh, criteria. And uh, we can enforce the policy based on ACL in our network. It is good. It is OK. Configuring the segmentation based on VLAN, configuring the security based on ACL is OK. It's good. But it's not very good in case of a medium to large scale network. You guys are already working in a production environment. You must have seen the number of entries in a typical access control list in your production environment. A typical ACL can consist of like two, 3,000 routes or more than that much amount of routes as well. How you are going to add a new entry in that ACL, how you are going to remove an entry from that ACL, how you are going to create a new VLAN, how you are going to remove a new v remove a particular VLAN from the infrastructure. A lot of, even if you enforce the security based on as basic as VLAN or the ACL, it will still be, it will still get complex when your network gets, uh, you know, comparatively a little bit uh, big. So even in case of security, if, if, even, when, even when it comes to security, we can enforce the security as simple as by using like VLAN and ACL. But in a, in a small scale network, it is okay. But in a in a large scale infrastructure, it is not very much uh, uh, feasible to uh, handle all these VLANs or ACLs one by one. Uh, you know, it it is possible, but it will take again. It will consume a lot of time, and it will impose again a lot of challenges. And don't let's let's not talk about let's not talk about how you are going to connect your infrastructure to the cloud. Let's not talk about how your network is going. To, if your network has some Let's say, for example, IoT devices, Internet of Things, these you know, small devices. How how it is going to handle with that? Let let let's not even talk about that. And of course, you are not going to have only Cisco devices in your infrastructure. So let's also not talk about the uh, the, the 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 vendor. Like uh, maybe you might have uh, you, you are having a few routers, you are having a few um, switches, you are having a few uh, firewalls from Cisco. And you also have some Juniper devices. You also have some, uh, like, you know, uh, let's say, for example, Palo Alto Firewall. You also have some other uh, vendor devices as well. How you are going to manage all those devices one by one. So the point is, I'm not, I'm not saying that modern day network is, is, is you know, uh, it's completely outdated, but there are challenges. There are a lot of challenges in a modern day network, in a, in a typical uh, campus area network, in a typical network, in a modern day network that needs to be addressed. How your infrastructure, how you are going to connect your infrastructure to the known and unknown network, how you are going to connect your infrastructure uh, to, let's say, for example, uh, internet, how you are going to connect your this branch to this branch securely over a public transport such as internet. You might need to configure things such as IPsec so that the config so that the communication between branch one and branch two is secured. How many number of IPsec tunnels you are you are going to create if you have like let's say for example two hundred branches worldwide? Are you going to go for public transport such as internet or are you going to go for like private transport such as MPLS? Are you going to go for MPLS based VPN or are you going to go for you know normal you know IPsec? or DMVPN or those type of technologies. When you read that chapter number one, when we read, when you, when you go through that chapter number one of your official certification guide, these problems are described in much more better way. I have just listed a few problems that you can face in a modern day network, in a growing network, in a, in a modern day, uh, a wide area network, in a modern day campus area, in a modern day local area network. So the bottom line is that network of today, they do not address today's business needs effectively. We have our modern day network is good, but it can be better. Like we, like the modern day network is actually okay. We are still doing all the configuration management all by ourselves, all by manual. 
but we can always take the help with this software defined approach with this software defined networking approach so that those challenges that we face can be addressed as well right so networks modern day networks cannot respond quickly to evolving business needs if a changes need to be done manually and such modifications take long time and they are again uh, prone to variety of errors Suddenly, let's say, for example, a customer has reported a certain type of change. You might need to get approval from the higher management, and then you will be able to deploy those changes uh, once you get the approval. So the 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 modern day networks, modern day networks, they cannot respond quickly to the evolving business needs if the changes need to be done manually. Such modifications take long time, and they are also prone to errors. Effective network segmentation can be ex uh, exceptionally difficult to achieve in a complex network with a variety of users, devices requiring different access privileges. There are routers, there are switches, there are firewalls, there are access points, there are WLC, there are end users, there are IoT devices, there are sensors, there are different different types of devices, and all those devices need different different privileges, different different access levels of your network. So it is going to be exceptionally difficult to uh, manage that a complex network uh, uh, manually. Traditional IP-based network methods with firewall, VLAN, ACLs, they do not scale and they are not efficient in responding to the real-time needs. As per the reports, as per a simple report, like 95% uh, uh, of the network changes are performed manually. As per the report, 75% of operational expenses is spent on the changes and troubleshooting. As per the report, 70% of the policy violations are due to human errors. Right? So ratio of operational expenses versus capital expenses on the network operation, labor and tools is approximately three into one. We are spending more time, we are spending more money in like uh, managing and troubleshooting the network uh, tools, labors and like you know all these things we are spending more money on that one to address all these challenges to address all these challenges uh, of your campus local area network wide area network data center for example to address all these challenges they introduced uh, software defined networking in the in the market to overcome these challenges they decided to use software defined approach to manage the network where engineer will configure its intent and the software will automatically configure the devices based on the intent. More like you will say this is, let's say, you will say this is the intended configuration on the switch. This is what the configuration on the switch at this, this, this point of time should look like. The, the controller, the, the, that piece of software, that piece of software will keep checking the configurations onto that switch and anytime for example, the configuration drifts away. Anytime the configuration uh, moves from what, what, what is intended to be, the con controller can push the intended configuration onto the device automatically. So we as a network engineer have to define the intent and the piece of software that controller is going to configure that intent on the devices automatically. Right? So uh, the question is, is SDA available for the cloud also uh, to manage multiple sites uh, like in SD-WAN we have vManage on the cloud? No, no. And Rag, at the moment, it is not available. This DNS enter appliance, this DNS enter hard, this DNS enter controller is at the moment hardware only. Cisco has recently, uh, a few months back, Cisco has said that they are working on a software, uh, you know, a virtual appliance for this DNS enter. And they have created a virtual appliance. Uh, they have created a virtual, uh, you know, OWA file, if you, if, you, if, you, if you say, that can be deployed or, or some file that can be deployed on the AWS cloud. Nowadays, we have that option. But still, the documentation, deployment related, everything is not that much clear. You can deploy. If you want, you can deploy this uh, DNS enter nowadays on the AWS cloud. In fact, you will be able to deploy this DNS enter in a simple server in upcoming years. But at the moment, majorly, this is a hardware appliance that Cisco sells. 
and it is not it is just an operating system it is just a piece of software deployed in deployed on their ucs series platform they have server right cisco has servers in those servers they installed this dna center image software and they sell it with the name of dna center appliance we'll talk about that in the hardware but at the moment majorly they give hardware they are working on the solution they have in fact created uh, the virtual appliance that can be deployed on the cloud aws cloud and in in uh, in near future you will see that this dna center appliance can also be deployed in a in a in a premise in on premises environment such as esxi you can you can you might be able to do it in near future but at the moment mostly it is a hardware appliance it's very costly very costly you know that is why like a lot of companies are not even going you will understand why it is not it is not gaining that much popularity nowadays like now people are going for the dna center why it didn't gain that much popularity you will understand you know throughout the content you will know like okay oh this is what we need to study for the dna center this is what we need to study for the dna center well, leave it let the network remain as it is we will deal with those challenges manually so there are a few things that cisco has you know uh, improved uh, quite a lot in this dna center plans one of this reason like yeah it it, it contains a lot of bugs and let me tell you let me tell you one funny thing current version of the dna center is 2.3 point something right something like 2.3 point something cisco is launching a new dna center version you know cisco is launching a new dna center and guess what is the name of that version cisco is recently planning to launch like uh, since cisco is planning to launch a new version of the dna center you know they are launching version 6 and version 7 forget about version 3 4 5 they are launching they will launch like uh, uh, dna center version 6 or 7 something like that just so just so you think that oh they have evolved a lot maybe they have done a lot of uh, hard work in in perfecting the dna center appliance but uh, uh, it's not that perfect it, they, there are a lot of bugs there are a lot of bugs that you might face there are a lot of issues that you might face in the dna center appliance we will talk about them we will face them we will you will notice that we have still a, a lot of chances of improvement in this dna center plans but i guess like uh, as as soon as this comes into the production environment as a as a software uh, appliance as a software image uh, people start deploying it in their environment and you know they get to know like okay this is very beneficial uh, the they will report the bugs they will report the issues uh, to cisco and they will keep working on the same so hopefully that it will get as good as the cisco software defined van as the van solution that they have but yeah, at the moment, it has a lot of challenges. So to overcome these challenges, they decided to use software defined approach to manage the network where engineer will configure the intent and software will automatically configure the devices based on that particular intent. Now Cisco offers three SDN solution and network programmability options. Cisco has three solutions. Cisco has offered like Cisco, there are three different SDN and network programmability solution available from Cisco. Others are there as well, but there are three major ones. Uh, one solution that Cisco has, one solution that Cisco has for this software defined networking is this uh, Open Daylight controller. So Open Daylight controller, uh, Cisco had like the uh, launched earlier, the Cisco Open Daylight controller, it was Cisco's uh, offering as an open SDN solution, open SDN controller uh, for everyone. Like this was initial, this was initial offering from Cisco. Uh, this was initial offering from Cisco for the software defined networking. So this open daylight controller, or we call that ODC, this open daylight controller was initial offering from Cisco, which served as a Cisco uh, open SDN controller uh, for the network. Uh, nowadays it has like, they, they they do not sell it so it has gone obsolete nowadays cisco they do not sell uh, this uh, uh, open daylight controller uh, nowadays then they have cisco aci applications and tech infrastructure for the data center network and they have epic em controller for the enterprise network the controller for 
there is a controller for data center infrastructure there is a controller for the enterprise network as well cisco like open daylight controller was something that they used to offer earlier it has gone obsolete nowadays cisco application centric infrastructure aci which is a very popular deployment in a data center network so for a data center in a data center network you will notice that the data center network is built on the concepts of aci application centric infrastructure and there is a controller that manages the aci operations there, there is a controller to manage the entire data center in a software defined fashion and for the enterprise network for the enterprise network they had this controller called epic enterprise module or epic em keep in mind epic is completely epic and epic em they are two different things they are two complete different things they are not the same thing epic is different epic em is different actually so in a modern day network we have cisco when it, when it comes to cisco's offering when it comes to cisco's offering for software defined networking in a modern day network we have cisco as the man for next gen wide area network we have cisco as the a for the campus area network and we have cisco application policy infrastructure controller for the data center network based on aci and it all uh, is in combined what we call software defined networking for modern day network so some day when you study about the data center network some day when you study about dc you will notice that the dc infrastructure is built around the concepts of aci and the controller that is used to manage controller that is that is used to manage the data center network is called epic application policy infrastructure controller uh, when you deploy when you work on the enterprise network you will notice that modern day enterprise solution uh, modern day enterprise network when we want to connect our enterprise branch when we want to connect our network to the wan cisco as the wan solution based on viptela or meraki is uh, there is is there as the an offering for the next gen wide area network and cisco as da is what they are offering for campus area network they are offering for a local campus area network end to end if you talk about that end to end how the solution looks like let's say you have deployed a complete sdn solution in your infrastructure in your data center in your branch in your headquarter everywhere let's say you have deployed in that you had deployed the complete sdn in your infrastructure sdn doesn't mean python sdn doesn't mean your programming sdn just means that there is a piece of controller that is responsible to manage the devices from a centralized point most of the people when they think about sdn they immediately think about language like python programming languages we will need to do the programming and the uh, you know uh, the, the the programming the the code the python script is going to execute and it will run the uh, the the uh, it will it will execute and it will configure the devices it's not like that it's your choice if you are if you are well versed in programming you can use python scripting all these controller all these controllers can actually interact all these controllers these can interact with the third party automation tool such as postman such as any tool that your company might be working on there is a concept of api i'm not sure how much you are familiar with but there is a concept of api application uh, programming interface api just just think of it api as a way for one piece of software to talk with another piece of software a software talks to other software in a language called api like for example we are talking in english language so this language is serving as an api between sender and the receiver in a similar way there is a language between the sender and receiver where the sender and receiver are piece of software the sender and receiver they are just a piece of software so that api application uh, programming and uh, like uh, infrastructure, uh, infrastructure that we have the api it is you can consider it as a as a as a language you can consider this as a language for your uh, like one piece of software to communicate with the other piece of software right so if if you are good in programming uh, you can use the scripting you can use python scripting you can use all those uh, scripting and uh, you can in fact uh, use those application programming interface apis and you based on which one program can talk to another program right fine so how the end to end solution will look like 
how the end to end solution will look like end to end solution will look like something like this like this end to end software defined network for a campus van and data center network using the controller will look like this where we have in a campus area network in a campus area network we have sda managing our wired and wireless infrastructure of the campus area network then we have a sd wan software defined wide area network which is responsible to connect our wan as devices of our branch to let's say headquarter data center and whatever so sd wan is responsible to uh, create secure tunnels from one point to other point so that my data can be transported over the over any type of transport public transport private transport in a secure manner and within the data center environment we will have that aci epic concept the software defined networking solution the sdn solution for the data center network we will have that uh, aci epic concept for the same so end to end like if you have deployed like uh, the software defined approach if you have configured the software defined approach to manage the lan and wan infrastructure and your data center it will look something like that sda for the lan aci for the data center and to connect the edge to edge like uh, vanage router to vanage router in a secure fashion we are going to have the sd wan powered by webtel this is how the end to end solution of your sd wan will look like as end to end solution for sdn will look like okay not as the wan this is the end to end solution from your branch to the data center to the headquarter and also we can have traditional devices like you know we have a traditional branch we have a traditional branch here we do not have software defined wan here we do not have software defined uh, uh, lan access uh, but still they can they can communicate to each other a software defined branch a software defined data center can connect to a traditional uh, network as well so you have a compatibility how that is a different thing that is a different case but you do have the compatibility between software defined and non software defined branches right so this is the basics this is this is this is you know uh, this is why this is uh, why we need the cisco sda solution for the enterprise network uh, this is this is uh, to address different different types of challenges that we might face in a production environment so uh, that is there you know what are those different different type of challenges i have tried to explain now you can also uh, you know go to the chapter number 1 to address those challenges to check those challenges and uh, we will talk about like uh, uh, from here we saw that you know we have different different challenges in a modern day campus area network in fact in the wide area network as well uh, when you study the technologies such as sd wan we will talk about the uh, challenges that you face in a modern day wide area network but in general we have talked about the challenges that we face in uh, normally in a in an enterprise normal campus area network what cisco proposed what what the vendors actually proposed uh, to overcome those challenges was to introduce this software defined networking uh, in the uh, campus area network as well software defined networking has been there in the data center environment for a very long time right so uh, the data center network is built around the concepts of acis application centric infrastructure a typical data center is built around the application that it is it is uh, responsible to give uh, services for so a typical data center is based around this aci infrastructure and to manage this aci infrastructure we have a controller called epic uh, application policy infrastructure controller and uh, they they thought of implementing they thought of introducing the same software defined networking in a campus area network as well and they launched two technologies uh, for the same they launched one technology called sd wan and they launched the other technology called sda so sda or sd access is the technology that we have here in a campus area network to manage the uh, lan infrastructure of the campus area network and we have the sd wan technology to manage the wide area network devices like these wan routers from a centralized point right so overall this solution is going to be referred to as like software defined solution or software defined networking uh, in a campus area network note that when we talk about software defined networking it's not always about uh, 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 note down that when we talk about this software defined networking it's not always about uh, programming right 
uh, it's not it's not about like uh, python scripting it's not always about like having the knowledge of uh, uh, some language and you know creating the codes writing the scripts and deploying that scripts and all it's not always about that you know here here uh, what do we mean by the software defined networking here we mean that uh, we are going to use uh, some sort of a controller a centralized piece of hardware we are going to use uh, uh, a controller in our infrastructure and that controller is going to uh, manage the LAN and WAN devices of the campus area network. Right here, for example, in the data center network, just like we have this EPIC controller in the enterprise network, they had launched this thing called EPIC EM, uh, Application Policy Infrastructure Controller Enterprise Module, which got repurposed, which got uh, redesigned in, the, in a new controller named as Cisco DNS Center later on. So uh, this is this is the course focus. This is what we are going to talk about in our curriculum, right? So we 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 have we have we have talked about the challenges. We have talked about different different challenges that we face in uh, the uh, traditional uh, network, right? We have talked about these different different challenges in the in the in the uh, traditional network actually, right? So. We have challenges like operational challenges. We do have like some operational challenges. We do have some uh, deployment challenges. We have some uh, management related challenges. We have some we security related challenges. Uh, and more more importantly, all these devices that we are going to uh, deploy in our campus area network. Now we are going to talk purely about the campus area network. We are not going to talk about the ACI data centers, right? Nothing nothing that we are going to talk about now is going to be um, centric to this uh, ACI infrastructure. It's always going to be now the campus area network. So uh, when we have, when we are you know deploying some devices in a campus area network, such as these routers, such as these switches, uh, firewalls, access points, WLCs, and all, um, the, every device, every device that we have in our campus area network, uh, they have uh, their own uh, set of uh, some uh, architectural planes such as every device has something called a control plane every device has something called a data plane and every device has some every device has something called a management plane right just to give you a brief idea just to give you the brief idea management plane of the device deals with the device management how the device is being managed uh, the administrator uh, uh, if the uh, like administrator has configured uh, the device uh, using the console using the auxiliary using the telnet ssh snmp what method of management is being used uh, that has to be dealt with this uh, that, that, this is the responsibility of the management management plane to deal so management plane actually deals with the device management anything that you do uh, related to the device management is handled by the management plane of the device you can consider you can consider management plane of the device as a part of a device which is responsible for device management, such as console, such as auxiliary, such as telnet, SSH, basically VTY, such as SNMP. Everything related to the device management comes under the management plane functionalities. Data plane on the device deals with the data traffic, like when it when the device receives the data it performs the capsulation then it checks the uh, the routing table then decides where to forward the traffic checks the mac address table decides where to forward the traffic right so uh, the actual data forwarding from the device is done with the help of the data plane of the device so data plane on the device is concerned data plane on the device is concerned with actually it is concerned with the forwarding of the data how the data is being forwarded uh, that is actually the uh, responsibility of the, uh, the the data plane of the device and control plane uh, is used to build though it is used to build those different different tables such as routing tables such as arp cache such as mac address table uh, control plane is is responsible to build those different different tables uh, based on which the data plane will decide uh, like okay this is how the data has to be forwarded Control plane operations basically are CPU centric operations like anything that the CPU does are uh, going to be included in this control plane operations. So every device that we have in our production environment, all these routers, switches, and all these other devices that we have, they have their, uh, their, their, you know, their own set of control plane, data plane, management plane. This device has its own set of control plane, management plane, data plane. This device has its own set of control plane, management plane, data plane. This device has its own set of control plane data plane 
and management plan and uh, since the management is done box by box like for example if you want to manage this device you have to connect to this device using telnet ssh console you know whatever whatever mean you want to uh, use to connect to it but once you are connected to this device then only you are going to do whatever configurations you need to do then uh, you will disconnect from here then you will connect your machine on here then you will do whatever configuration you are going to do for the same so uh, basically uh, every device has its own set of control plane a uh, management plane and data plane they have uh, like more like you know uh, if you say distributed uh, control plane data plane management plane is there means like every device has its own set of control plane management plane and data plane and because of that uh, because of that if we want to do the device management we have to do the device management uh, box by box uh without any doubt we can use some uh, configuration management tools we can use we can use some management tools as well but that that was the point in the last class like we can use different different uh, uh you know tools to manage the configurations on the devices we can use different different tools to manage uh, the device itself but the main problem was the same as well like there are different different tools that we can use some companies they might use a different set of tools some other companies might use different set of tools so uh different you know different different like uh, uh, devices uh, different different companies might go for different different tools to manage those different different devices like there are there might be some tools that might work only with the cisco devices but not on the other devices so we have different different tools to manage the configuration and the device uh, in our production environment but you know those tools are also fragmented fragmented tool offering basically means like we have different different tools to manage different different devices in our production environment so since like th that was also a problem that is also a problem that every device has its own set of control plane management plane and data plane so when it comes to the device management the device management device management needs to be done on box by box basis that was also a problem right so we we had a lot of challenges we had a lot of challenges in a traditional network so how this uh, uh, software defined networking has solved these challenges specifically if you talk about how this sda how this software defined access has solved these challenges uh, in uh, your campus area network right so uh, first thing first like uh, what is this cisco sda solution how like cisco is what is this cisco sda solution and how this cisco software defined access solution works in your campus area network so uh, cisco sda solution of within the cisco dna center architect architecture within the cisco dna digital network architecture also known as uh, cisco dna it, it is built on intent based networking principle so cisco sda solution cisco software defined access solution within the cisco dna center is built around the intent based networking principle it provides greater visibility automated end to end segmentation to separate the user devices and application traffic without redesigning the underlying physical infrastructure so you can have whatever physical infrastructure you want to have you can create whatever physical infrastructure you want to have as long as the devices that you are using in your infrastructure as long as these devices are reachable to that controller called dna center um, everything is going to work out um, without any problem All right you do not need to redesign your underlying infrastructure you you can uh, let the underlying infrastructure remain as it is as it was basically so if you are already uh, if you have already designed your campus area network and you are planning to implement you are planning to integrate it with the cisco uh, dna center cisco software defined access solution you do not necessarily actually need to redesign the entire uh, network right so uh and also cisco dna center this uh, D, D, this cisco sda solution is going to separate it is going to uh, uh provide the visibility uh, for the user traffic traffic generated by the devices and the application separately 
like we have, we will have a dashboard uh, to see the user statistics we will have a dashboard to see uh, the network device statistics and we will have the dashboard to see application uh, traffic statistics like uh, based on that we can uh, get a, a greater visibility like what applications are being used in our environment uh, uh, more as compared to the other applications what devices are generating or what, what devices are facing uh, problems how like what users are connected in my infrastructure and what traffic or what what type of traffic what application traffic they are generating and sending the most so we do it, it this cisco sd solution provides greater visibility automated end to end segmentation to separate user device and application traffic without redesigning the underlying infrastructure and also we can create policies Cisco SDA, Cisco Software Defined Access, automates the user access policies so that organizations can uh, make sure that the right policies are established for any user or any device with any application across the network. We have a separate, we have a dedicated uh, policy dashboard uh, in our uh, SDA solution. We have a policy dashboard in our SDA solution and that policy dashboard can be used to create a different, different policies based on which users will be allowed to access the devices or users will be denied the access uh, to the devices we can create the policies we can create the policies as per our requirement uh, for the users or the devices with any application across the network i can restrict the access of a particular user to a certain device or to a certain application from that policy dashboard and this is done for both LAN and wireless local area network. We do not need to define two separate policies for the same. Uh, we can define one a unified policy. We can define just one policy and that policy will work for both LAN and wireless local area network for wireless uh, LAN as well. Right. So earlier we we might need to decide if we have like wired and wireless infrastructure both in your in in your network. Then you might need to define a separate set of policies for wired users, and you may, you might need to decide or define the separate policies for the wireless users. But here we can define one policy from the policy dashboard, and that that policy is going to be clearly applied across the LAN and the wireless local area network. That policy can control what users are allowed to access what devices or what devices are allowed to access what other devices or users are allowed to access these certain applications or these users are not allowed to access these certain applications right so uh, not only it gives us the visibility of the entire network but we can also create the policies based on which uh, our users will be permitted or denied the access to the network devices or certain applications Now, let's 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 quickly talk about before moving any further. Let's quickly talk about the uh, the challenges that we faced in the last class, and uh, let's talk about how this uh, um, SDA solution is going to in fact, uh, you know, it it is going to be beneficial in our uh, production environment. So first thing first, we had a lot of security challenges. We had a lot of security challenges in our infrastructure. We had different different set of users. We had different different set of devices, and we wanted to control uh, what devices can access uh, what devices or what devices can actually uh, you know talk to what other uh, devices. Earlier in in a traditional network, this is done with the help of uh, traditional methods such as access control list. It is done based on the traditional methods such as uh, uh, VLANs. We can use VLANs at layer two, or we can use uh, things such as VRF at layer three. We can use things such as access control list, based on which we can provide a, a certain level of segmentation in our network. We can uh, we can separate the traffic of two customers or two users uh, based on VLAN onto a switch. We can separate the traffic of two customer based on VRF on a router, or we can configure. Uh, some access control list on our routers and switches to control uh, what users are what uh, you know uh, source is allowed to communicate with what destinations and all 
but in a production environment creating the you all know that there are very limited amount of villains available in a production environment or in a normal environment as well uh, you know that a typical access control list can have like many entries a lot of entries and managing the access control list uh, deleting the entries adding the entries it, it it can be a very hectic task so in the cisco sda solution in the cisco software defined access solution security is provided by integrating something called ice identity services engine ice or identity services engine ice is a, a you know ice is a device that we are going to have as a part of our sda solution ice is a component that we are going to have uh, in our sda solution sda solution is not only going to involve a controller it is also going to involve a policy enforcement engine control like this uh, next gen software defined access solution is going to of course involve a controller based on which uh, we are going to uh, do all the configuration and management related tasks but it will also include it will also include a device from where we are going to enforce policies in our infrastructure and that device is going to be cisco identity services engine we'll talk more about it in in, in detail later on so ice on the identity services engine we can use this concept of uh, security group tags or uh, in 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 terms of sda it is what we call as scalable group tags anyone from the security uh, track uh, might uh, these these terms might be familiar uh, might be very much familiar to them like this ice security group tag or in the terms of sda we call it a scalable group tag sgts right so instead of creating like for example vlans instead of creating complex acls instead like instead of configuring like you know ip based acls and all what we can do we can create the policies based on uh, these scalable group tags we call that uh, group based access control we can we can provide something called group based access control in our infrastructure uh, by using by integrating cisco identity services engine uh, in the sda solution so cisco sda solution is going to include a controller and it is going to include a policy enforcement engine that is uh, that is in that is you know that is uh, nothing just the cisco identity services engine and it is uh, going to be responsible to uh, deal with all the security related challenges such as for example instead of creating uh, a vlan vra for acl we can do the segmentation of the traffic of the user purely based on this uh, uh, scalable group scalable groups or uh, later on you will study about this thing called vn which relates to vrf again so ice is going to be what what we what, what we say in the in the sda term ice is going to be policy plane ice is going to be policy plane of the sda ice is the point from where we are going to create variety of policies and we are going to push those policies into the sda infrastructure right so uh, cisco uses like this cisco sda solution uses ice as the policy plane in the sda infrastructure in the sda solution and it is going to deal with all those security related challenges that we were facing in a traditional environment now you could have used ice anyways like you, you do not need to go uh, you and, and purchase a cisco sda solution just to just so that you can use the identity services engine of course you can you can use ice without the sda solution as well but once we integrate the dns center and ice together you will notice that dns center will become a single point of a single pane of glass like a single point of control for everything in fact the policies and everything that you will that you want to create those policies are going to be created on the dns center dns center is going to push those policies to the ice and then ice is going to deliver those policies to the end switches so we will get a uniform we will get a simple we will get one single graphical user interface uh, of this dns center and from here 
we can actually define the scalable groups from here we can define these things called vm from here we can define this thing called policies and all these things are going to be pushed by the dns center to the ice which is going to implement those policies that you have just configured so yes you could have done it uh, uh, without the sda solution as well you could have gone to the ice and you could have created these things called scalable group or in terms of security we call that security group tags or uh, you, you could have created these vms or you know you could have created the policy mat from the policy matrix and all you could have done that but then the device management was still done on box by box basis all those traditional challenges that we have uh, you will still face those traditional challenges so I, since ice is a part of cisco sda solution once we integrate ice with the dns center dns center becomes the centralized point from where we can create all these scalable groups virtual networks and these policies and based on that actually uh, based on that uh, you know uh, your infrastructure is going to be uh, uh, secured so it's complete it's, it's it's completely your choice you could have used it without the dns enter solution you could have used it uh, uh, with the dns enter solution but uh, once we once we use this ice cisco identity services engine with the dns enter we can perform the integration of the dns enter and ice and both both of these devices are going to uh, you know be uh, the, from the dns enter we are going to create all the policies and everything and and uh, the policies will get pushed to the ICE automatically. They talk to each other like ICE and DNS Center. They talk to each other with the help of some APIs, and uh, uh, they can back and forth. They can uh, push the policies and information to each other. So all the security related challenges are handled by this thing called ICE Identity Services Engine. Now, since we are going to have a controller. Which is referred to as referred to as Cisco DNS Center. We are going to have a centralized uh, management plane. We are going to have a like from this DNS Center, we can manage all the networking devices in our infrastructure. We can define the policies. We can define the, uh, the configurations. All those things we can define from this Cisco uh, DNS Center as well. So we do not need to do box by box management. We can use this Cisco DNS Center to manage all the infrastructure devices from one centralized point. So uh, the the management related challenges are going to be dealt with this uh, uh, Cisco DNS Center solution as well, right? A part of this DNS Center, like DNS Center, has two main components. Uh, like the, in the DNS Center, we have two main components. One component is what we call as a, a network control platform, or uh, typically it is it is what was uh, the Epic EM. You know, Epic EM got repurposed, and it was uh, it was implemented. It was implemented uh, in this uh, Cisco SDA solution with the name of network control platform. Network control platform is what was the Epic EM in earlier days. We can deploy, we can deal with all the deployment related challenges with the help of this network control platform. I can, I can, in fact, uh, you know, a ship, I can, I can send a switch in my branch and I can ask my network engineer to connect this switch into the branch and I can use this um, network control platform or simply say, I can use the DNS center in an automated fashion to deploy all the uh, relative configurations onto that switch automatically. Like all the settings regarding uh, AAA, DHCP, NTP, syslog, you know, in fact, all the IP addresses, every configuration that you need to do can be done automatically uh, with the help of this uh, DNS center appliance. And the part that does that uh, in the DNS Center appliance is called NCF Network Control Platform. Network Control Platform is the part of the DNS Center. It is the component of the DNS Center that deals with all these deployment related challenges. We can push the configurations on the devices 
with the help of this DNA center network control uh, platform. Eventually, it was like uh, earlier, it was uh, labeled as Epic EM, but it got repurposed and it is now deployed as network control platform in the DNA center solution, in the SDA solution. Like we can provision the devices, we can create the branch, we can create the fabric, we can create the, we can, DNA center can push the configurations regarding, for example, BGP complex configuration, quality of service, all those things DNA center can push all those complex configuration that will take a lot of human efforts. DNA center can push uh, those configurations on the devices in more like an automated fashion. So the deployment, uh, if you want to deploy a new device, the deployment related challenges that you were facing earlier are going to be very minimum. These switches can also leverage this thing called PNP, plug and play services. And these switches have capabilities to be automatically discovered by the DNA center and push the configurations, uh, like the DNA center can push the configurations on all those devices as well. A lot of features, a lot of features in this uh, uh, Cisco DNA centers are very useful, such as there is a feature called uh, a LAN automation. This LAN automation feature uh, can automatically discover the underlay infrastructure and it can automatically build underlay infrastructure uh, for you. Like this DNA center, for example, can reach to this particular device. This particular device we need to configure. This particular device we need to make reachable from the DNA center. And then DNA center can discover all the other devices automatically. It can, it can configure the IP addresses. It can configure the routing protocol. It can configure the loopback. And it, since the routing is now done, it, all those devices can be made reachable to the DNA center in a complete automated fashion. You do not even need to touch those devices. You just need to, you know, uh, uh, deploy those devices in your infrastructure, connect it with some cables to the other switches and all, and that's it. You do not need to do anything on those devices. It leverages this PNP technology, plug and play technology of the switches and DNA center can be used to configure these, this underlay infrastructure. We'll talk about underlay overlay, but this underlay infrastructure in more of an automated fashion. It's not, it, it's not uh, as easy as it seems, but but yes, it 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 can it can, it can do. That. It uses CDP mostly. It uses CDP uh, for the for the discovery purpose of all these devices. Or we can define uh, completely onto us. We'll talk about that in the LAN automation. But uh, uh, you know, it uses this uh, protocol, Cisco Discovery Protocol, the CDP, uh, and uh, based on the CDP messages, it can discover the devices configure the links as the layer three links, configure the IP address, make the adjacencies, uh, make the ISIS adjacencies and uh, uh, configure the reach and mark the reachability and everything. It is, a, it, is, it, is a, it is a very complex feature. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, but at least it is available. Right, so all those deployment related challenges that we were having, it is, it is going to be very like minimum. I'm not saying it is completely eliminated, but yeah, they are going to be uh, very much low to minimum uh, configuration deployment related challenges in our production environment. Right. We can manage, I, I have already talked about the management uh, uh, related challenges. We have us, we have the graphical user interface, we have the GUI. Uh, access of this uh, uh, DNA center from where we can manage all the devices, all the wired and wireless devices from one centralized point. So that I have also talked about. So it is going to deal with all those, uh, uh, you know, uh, management related challenges as well. Uh, ISIS or, uh, you know, ISIS protocol intermediate system to intermediate system. Uh, this this protocol actually is used as the routing protocol to build the underlay infrastructure, right? So Cisco recommends that you use ISIS when building the underlay infrastructure. The, the, it, it's their recommendation because that is what will be used by this LAN automation feature while configuring the underlay network automatically. 
right so uh, but you know we do not need to configure the isis ourselves if you are going to leverage that pnp technology and going to use this uh, uh, you know lan automation feature isis configurations will be done on these switches automatically <laughs> we don't need to understand that much of isis yes I would say that uh, it's not like we need to have the understanding of the ISIS protocol as uh, as much as we have the understanding of OSPF or EIGRP. No, if I if you if you if you uh, know like ISIS protocol is a very popular protocol for a service provider environment, and typically in an enterprise network we will see protocols such as OSPF EIGRP being used. We typically do not talk about ISIS protocols. ISIS protocol that much in our content. Like earlier in, in older version of the CCI curriculum, they had this basic basics of ISIS, but they have completely removed it. So no, they, they do not want us to know in very much detail of this ISIS protocol, just the basics, just the basics like, okay, ISIS is a routing protocol, which can be used to create these, you know, um, adjacencies, routing and everything can be done based on the ISIS protocol. And rest of the things will be done automatically. And you know, this is, this is one of the reasons why people are not going for this, this DNS center, um, you know, that much. First of all, the cost, the controller that we have, it is very costly, right? Of course, for the companies, for the production environment, it's not a big deal. But a typical DNS center controller is going to cost you approximately around a 35 to 40 lakh INR, right? I'm sure you can convert it into the other currencies as well. But a typical DNS center appliance is going to cost you somewhere around 35 to 40 at, up, up for a medium to large scale network. Based on what uh, uh, DNS center, there are three models for the DNS center and based on which DNS center model you go for, the costing is going to vary as well. Right. So one thing is cost. One thing is cost. Second thing. Second thing is the uh, the dependency on these protocols such as the understanding of these protocols such as isis understanding of the protocols such as lisp understanding of the protocols such as vxlan if you do not understand lisp if you do not understand vxlan if you do not understand uh, uh, protocols such as isis um, you you might be able to deploy the dns in your production environment but you will not be able to have that much greater uh, idea of about the same that is why we are going to cover Lisp VXLAN as per our content, uh, at least a little bit. We'll talk a little bit about ISIS as well. But you know, for a production environment that is running for that is running on EIGRP or OSPF network for past 10, 15 years, and now you are asking them to migrate from the EIGRP OSPF to ISIS. Why? Because your DNS center uses ISIS as the underlay protocol while doing the LAN automation. Why a company is going to do that? A lot of companies. I I, I personally know a, a few companies that have that have dropped deploy, that had dropped the idea of deploying this uh, DNS center controller just because of that. They did just because they did not want to uh, you know uh, mess with the with the in existing infrastructure that they had. Uh, Cisco has launched the VM, but uh, hardware will still be required. You cannot run that VM directly uh, on anywhere like you can run that vm on the cloud for example aws cloud and that and uploading at approximately 20 20 30 approximately you have to see the documentation and everything uh you need you still need the hardware that is uh, you will still need the hardware if you want to deploy the dns center in your uh, on-premises environment then of course you will need the hardware in that case also uh, but if you want to deploy the DNS center in the in the cloud, for example, uh, AWS or others, then you need to download the file and then you have to upload the file onto the AWS cloud and then you can deploy it there as well. But still, if you are going to deploy it on the AWS cloud, you are going to pay the cloud services. You are going to pay for those cloud services as well. Cost is going to be anyway. Cost will be there anyway. Like they are also planning to launch a, a, a you know a, a VM for the for this uh, uh, ESXi environment as well. So if you have a server in your infrastructure, you can just download that and you can deploy that in your ESXi environment as well. So both currently they have launched, at the moment they have launched the one for the cloud. 
but they are planning also to launch one for the a home environment for the ESXi environment as well. It will still take five to six months for the same, for the, all the documents to come in the market and everything. Only a few people I, that I know have uh, successfully deployed the DNS Inter onto the AWS cloud. They got it working. I'm not saying that it's 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 not useful. It's very useful, but again, if you are going to run uh, the DNS Inter on a cloud, in, cloud uh, infrastructure such as AWS, costing is still going to be there. Might not be that much costly, but eventually the costing is going to be there. Right. So all the, all the, if you think about it, like all these uh, challenges that we had, like all these uh, uh, configuration related challenges that we had, for example, here, we can, the policy related challenges, we can create these group based access control, we can create the policies for applications, we can create the policy for copying the traffic, we can create the policies based on IP address, we can create the VMs, everything regarding the policy we can do in this policy dashboard, in this policy workflow. We want to design our network. Uh, we want to design the sites, we want to design the branches, IP address pool, uh, about the syslog, NTP, DHCP, all that. We can do everything related to the design in under the design workflow. Or you want to configure the devices, you can configure the devices under, you want to create a fabric, you can do that uh, under the provision workflow. Right? You can integrate different, different services such as a VPN services such as umbrella integration and the other services as well, uh, application visibility and control AVC, for example. Uh, you can integrate different different services in your SDA environment uh, from this provision dashboard as well for better uh, user experience, for the better uh, security, for the better enhancement. Uh, uh, like for for the enhancements in your in your network, you can integrate these other services as well. Everything regarding the configuration and provisioning can be done under the provision dashboard. Right. This is itself, this is the, the DNS enter controller uh, from where we can do all the device management. For example, I can go to the provision, I can go to the inventory, and I can see all the network devices that are there uh, at every, like global means everywhere, anywhere, like worldwide. These are the number of devices. Uh, these are the total 113 number of devices actually uh, that are there in this, uh, you know, uh, in this DNS center. These are 113 number of devices that are integrated with the, this uh, DNS center. Some, some, some are like switches and hubs. Some are switches and hubs which are WLC capable. Uh, some are, you know, you see uh, right here. Some are routers. Some are routers. Uh, you might also see unified access points, right? You might also see the wireless controller. These are the different different devices that this uh, uh, these wireless sensors that this uh, DNS center can manage. For example, let's click on this switch. If I click on this switch, you, you get the basic information about the switch right from here. You can see where that switch is actually uh, deployed like in San Jose location, in this location, the switch is actually deployed. This is the MAC address of the switch. This is the role uh, on, on, on which the switch is deployed. Uh, you can check the uptime uh, model and everything. You, you, can, you can check the basic information from here. You can check the basic information from here and you can, you can if you just uh, uh, click on this, it will give you it will give you uh, like you know uh, information on about that device in very much detail. This is Cisco D Cloud, like you know we talked about in the last class. This is Cisco D Cloud. Um, uh, these are this is not like uh, a my DNS enter. This is one from the Cisco itself for the demo purpose, right? So they have uh, they might have created a simple topology or you know just for the just for a demonstration uh, demonstration purpose. So this is that one. So we can check we can check the information on that particular switch. You know, we can check the information of that particular uh, you know ports and everything. Uh, we can check about the ports. We can check about the VLANs. We can check about the software hardware version. We can check about the configurations. You know these are the configurations that are there. We can download this configuration right. We can download that configuration right away. Just a single click. We can download that configuration. Of course, a few encryption keys will not be downloaded, but we can download the rest of the configuration for our information purpose. 
you can hide the number line so that you can download a proper configuration without the line and you can just paste it everywhere a lot of like you can check the status about the power supply fans uh configuration like is the current running configuration are same as the previous running configuration did you do any configuration changes are configurations drifting away from what they were intended to be you can check the configuration drift what is this config drift it means that what are the intended configuration versus uh, what are the current configuration is your current configuration drifting away from the intended configuration or what is there any difference in the running configuration and the startup configuration you can check all that you can check all that uh, from here right in short in sh see startup configuration running configuration is okay software image is okay there is no uh, security related uh, issues on this one in short you can actually get basic information about that device just from here a little bit more information as the previous one but you can still get uh, some information from here and if you want to get very detailed information just click on this view 360 this is called device 360 under the dns center this is called device 360 here we will get everything we will get all the information about that particular switch in very much detail like once it loads up this is called device 360 everything on, on that device that is going on we can check from here everything you can check even the topology and everything you can check like okay from this time to this time did we face any issue like you can you can you can select the time period and in that time period you can uh, try to for example uh, look for the issues and all right from 2 pm from the 2 pm to 8 pm did we face any issue it will list all the issues that you faced in that particular time period what was the topology at that particular like what, what is the topology currently on that one you know what devices are connected so you can you can get a greater visibility on the device uh, of the device from this uh, device 360 for example right so this is this is what this is what i was talking about this is what i was saying that this uh, a DNS center gives you a centralized point of management for all the devices uh, in your network. From here, you can manage all these things. Uh, Yusupal, any questions? Hey, so can you just uh, keep on enabling this feature to unmute and answer? Because there are a lot of questions <coughs> when you are talking. Uh, I forgot now, now to what to ask now. So, so yeah, actually. Um, yeah, the, the unmute feature I have disabled just because of the same, like, you know, if you suddenly unmute then uh, the recordings, uh, it might affect. So that is why, like, you know, you can just raise hand and I will just unmute to so, right away. Uh, there's not, there's I have a no lot problem. of questions actually, I forgot. Then meanwhile, you went to some other topic. And you suggest, can, you can, you can, you can, just in case, uh, like, you know, you can, uh, if you're on the, on the laptop, desktop, you can just, uh, you know, drop those questions in the chat right away, or you can uh, just ask as 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 soon as they come into the mind. No problem. Uh, I will miss right. that. Okay, I will definitely miss a lot of question in that way. I have a lot of question actually, which comes when you are talk talking. But if this feature is not available. It will be hard. I may miss a lot of question to ask. No, so in in that case, I, I, I can I can I can I can you know I can allow in everyone to unmute. But just uh, just in case, if you have a question, just plus like first raise hand and then unmute so that you know uh, I will I will pause and then we can have the Q and A. I can I can do that no problem, right? So if I, I'm I'm enabling that feature of unmuting yourself, uh, just in case if you guys have any question, just click on raise hand first yeah. and then unmute and then you know I can uh, I can have we can sure. have a question. Right, just, it is just so that you know we do not get interrupted in the like uh, in the flow. Actually, that, that is just that that was just the only aim for the same. No, sure, definitely we will oh. ask mm -hmm. question related to that topic what you are discussing. <coughs> but yeah, yeah. yeah sure, we will we'll see all okay, how it goes. All, all right, all right. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Right, so this is this is what we were talking about. This is what we were talking about. That we have this. Uh, uh centralized point of control from where uh, all the management can be done right and better better if you go to this assurance workflow for example uh like uh, a device is facing some challenges right let's say a particular device is facing some issues 
data center can use that ncp feature that we just talked about network control platform this this is this is a part of the cisco dna center that does all the provisioning and everything there is also a part of this dna center feature that is called ndp so this is network control platform the other one is called network data platform these are components of the dna center appliance network control platform is more like uh, to push the configurations on the devices and network data platform is more like to pull the configurations from the devices to give you these statistics and everything dna center can use dna center can also use this artificial intelligence artificial intelligence and machine learning it can use the artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities to actually predict to to tell you uh, the it it can give you a resolution it can give you a solution to a problem based on this art uh, like uh, ai and machine learning capabilities right so for example for example if you go to the assurance you go to the issues it will list all the issues that you are facing in your environment right so for example if i click on this issue this is a issue that i am facing somewhere in my branch so if i click on this issue right uh, the, what is the issue the issue is that in certain location uh, the host is flapping in vlan 1 right host flaps observed in the vlan 1 you click on that you click on that you scroll down and you can use this uh, uh, root cause analysis this uh, machine reasoning you can use this uh, machine reasoning tool once you run this machine reasoning tool it will analyze in backend it will use its uh, machine learning capabilities it will analyze the topology it will analyze the detail for you and it will predict it will give you a resolution based on its uh, its its uh, you know uh, like all these calculations you click on this view detail and it will tell you the conclusion what is the conclusion what is the problem loop detected on the vlan number 31 and what you should do you you have to enable uh, like you know enable vlan 31 stp instance on these devices so it 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 just predict it just gave you a, some sort of a, a resolution as well of the problem that you were facing of that issue as well it says that uh, uh, there might be the host is flapping and then this might be related to this uh, uh, stp that you have not enabled for vlan number 31 on the switch because of that you are facing the issue of mac flapping there is because there is a loop detected on vlan number 31 you do not need to go on all the switches do a show spanning tree find out the root port and all those you can use you can leverage this AI ML AI artificial intelligence machine learning uh, machine reasoning capabilities of the DNA center uh, to to detect these variety of issues and uh, it can also suggest it can give you uh, some uh, actions that you can take it can suggest some actions that you can take to resolve that particular problem so of course all the troubleshooting related tasks are going to be a lot more easier as well because of this uh, uh, capability that we have here in the DNA center. I'm just giving you the idea. I'm just giving you the idea that, okay, your DNA center uh, can almost deal with all the challenges that we have talked about in the last class. It can gather the information from the devices. It can gather the information from the devices using like, you know, uh, using like from the from the endpoints from the switches from the routers using technologies such as netflow uh, streaming telemetry a lot of things are there uh, based on which this device can pull the information from the from the devices and can give you better statistics it can give you better uh, it can give you uh, overall uh, idea of your network similar to what we use uh, similar to what you use in a traditional uh, netflow software you might be using a dedicated netflow software in your production environment and uh, uh, that netflow software is going to again collect the statistics of different different flows uh, in your infrastructure and gives you the the charts and everything that okay these are different different flows in my network and uh, uh, based on this 
we can analyze like what traffic is being used, how much, like what type of application, what type of data is being used uh, at what level. Right. So all these, all these traditional challenges that we have, all these traditional challenges that we have can be addressed. Like almost 90-90% challenges, like there are still a lot of chances of improvement, but almost all the challenges that we have listed in our uh, previous class can be can be solved or can be addressed um, uh, with this uh, Cisco DNA Center, this, this appliance. This is just the overview of this uh, DNA Center dashboard that I asked you to explore uh, from your side as well. We have design workflow, we have policy workflow, we have provision workflow, we have assurance workflow. We have all these workflows to uh, deal with different different things. All these workflows have their own, uh, you know, set of roles. All uh, these workflows have different set of uh, uh, options that we can uh, configure. We can do, and we will explore all these workflows one by one when we move on to the configuration part. Right. So when it comes to the when it comes to this uh, uh, component, like here, when it comes to like. Uh, elements, what elements are used in the Cisco DNA Center, Cisco SDA solution. One component is the controller. That is what we call as the DNA Center. It is the centralized controller from where we can do uh, like almost all the things. And then uh, you can, you can still, uh, Dushant, you can still use uh, a traditional, uh, you know, uh, syslog server, NetFlow server. You can use that if you want, just in case, if you want an external syslog server or the NetFlow collector software, you can use that. You have that option right here. You go to the design tab, you go to the network setting tab, and right here you can choose. You can provide the device credentials, you can provide the IP address pool. You can you have the option to configure a variety of things from here. You can you can you can integrate, you can give the information about AAA servers, you can give the information about the external DHCP servers. You can give the information about the DNS server, NTP server. Uh, there is also, you can also integrate like add server and you can uh, add, for example, a stealth watch flow destination. You can add a swim software image management server. You can add different, different servers as per the requirement, but we can also use the DNS center itself as the syslog server, as the NetFlow collector, uh, like that. There is an option here. You go to the telemetry. And we can use the DNS Center as the SNMP trap server, or we can use an external SNMP server as well. You can use the DNS Center as the syslog server, or you can use an external syslog server as well. You can use the DNS Center as the NetFlow collector, or you can use external NetFlow collector as well. If you want to monitor the wired client on a particular site, we can enable this feature uh, that is going to, uh, that is, that is, you know, that is what we call as uh, IP device tracking. We can enable this feature. So uh, the wired clients on the sites are going to be, uh, their data is also going to be uh, monitored. Monitor mind like collected and all. We can also uh, check the health of these wireless controllers, access points and clients if I enable the wireless telemetry. This is what we call a streaming telemetry. We are subscribing uh, from the DNA center. We are subscribing for the services like uh, I'm telling the wireless controller to give me statistical information at a certain time interval. I'm, I'm subscribing uh, to that particular telemetry service uh, with that access points and the clients at all. So yeah, we can use the DNA center itself as these different different servers, or we can have a dedicated set of uh, SNMP server, syslog server, uh, NetFlow collector, you know, uh, as well. Or, yeah, of course, it is going to depend on the uh, the the size the number of clients, devices, and all. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll talk about that. There's, uh, there's nothing like uh, all that matters is the reachability. If the reachability is there, traditional SNMP messages, traditional NetFlow messages, traditional like syslog messages can be sent from the device to the DNA center itself, and DNA center will be able to receive those messages and give you the statistical um, analysis of the same. So there is not a particular protocol for the same, like it's, it still uses the same thing. All that matters is the reachability from the device to the DNA center. And that reachability you can make based on any protocol that you want, like uh, EIGRP, like OSPF, like BGP, any, 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 any of them. 
Netflow services we use to you know get this that's is that like the the information on different different flows that we are having different different uh, traffic flows that we are having in the network. For example, we want to analyze how much percentage of our network traffic is HTTP, how much percentage of our traffic, what are the top applications uh, that we are using in our enterprise network. Those things can be analyzed, those things can be checked with the help of this NetFlow services. So devices export the statistical information to the NetFlow collector and collector collects that information and gives you charts about the same. We can use different different softwares for the same. We can use like, uh, I think SolarWind, SolarWind, uh, WhatsApp Gold, uh, uh, PRTG. There are different different uh, softwares that we can use uh, for as, as a NetFlow collector in our production environment. Or just leave that and just use this DNS center itself as the, as the you know, centralized dashboard for everything regarding the assurance. Like anyway, you will be able to monitor almost all the things from here almost all the things I'm, I'm i'm really not sure like uh, uh, anything extra you will get on your netflow but unless unless you are talking about any particular tool but uh, uh, you will get that information from the device automatically here here it also snmp same snmp here also it uses same snmp uh, strings snmp uh, you know uh, traps and everything for the same same thing it doesn't use any special protocol for the same Right, it's it's just traditional protocol. It, it leverages the traditional protocols that we have. Uh, for for example, for our SNMP, it is going to use SNMP. Like for logging, it is going to use SSH. Like it's the same. Right. So we have a controller. We have a controller that is labeled as DNS enter. Then we have Cisco Identity Services Engine or ICE as a policy enforcement engine. Then we have a network fabric. What is a fabric? Fabric is a, is a combination of something called an underlay network and the overlay network. So uh, SDA, Software Defined Access Solution, SDA solution is going to build some tunnels from one end of the switch to the other end of the switch. Your underlying infrastructure, you know, what your physical connectivities and all, your underlying infrastructure is going to be part of this thing called underlay. And the tunnels built from one switch to another switch on the top of that underlay network is called overlay. We will talk more about underlay overlay in detail later on. but. Uh, uh, this underlay network and the overlay network, once we have this underlay and overlay setup, this is what we are going to in combination, we are going to call as a fabric, campus fabric, right? So as a part of the SDA solution, we are going to have a network fabric. What is a network fabric? Network fabric is a combination of underlay network and the overlay network. Uh, yes, Uppal, any question? Yeah, so this how this analytical data will uh -huh. be displayed in that case if the data is tunneled, correct? If data... Uh, no, no, no. The tunnel is for the other thing. The tunnel that we have here, that the tunnel we are going to create, these are for other things such as carrying the uh, end user traffic and all. Uh, those are, those are you know, uh, using the tunnels. REST like is just same typical SNMP, typical uh syslog typical ntp typical typical messages that we have typical protocols that we have it is going to leverage the same these okay. tunnels that we are talking about these tunnels that we are talking about these are just for the data traffic like you know when the data traffic has to go from let's say one device to the other device the traffic is going to be tunneled and by tunnel i mean it it can use uh, such as in a traditional environment we have that gre tunnel Similar to that, we are going to have a tunnel that will carry the data from one end to the other end. And that tunnel will be part of something called overlay network. Okay, sure. Thank you. Right. We'll, we'll discuss more about underlay overlay later on. But what is a fabric? Fabric is a combination of underlay and overlay network. What is underlay? Underlay is the underlying infrastructure on the top of which 
a logical network is built and that logical network is called overlay network. This overlay network is built with the help of some tunnels. What tunnels? We'll talk about that. Ha, Dana Center can give you the information about both underlay and the overlay network. Like you, you, you can, uh, you know, get the issues, you can predict the issues, you can check the, uh, the problems in your infrastructure for both like underlay and overlay. We'll, we'll, we'll see in detail how can, how this underlay and overlay relates. We will see in detail that how we can uh, create the underlay network from the scratch and how we are going to uh, build an overlay network on the top of that underlay network from the scratch. We'll, 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 we'll see that. Means if, if you want, the DNA center can build an underlay network for you and then build an overlay network on the top of that if you want. Otherwise, if you have, for example, uh, you know, you already have an underlay network, for example, you can just uh, uh, configure the DNA center uh, to build a logical network. Uh, uh, that is what we refer to as uh, the overlay network. So, so in this migration time, correct, it will automatically uh -huh. build this network, underlay network, right? Because uh, we are no, running no, no, the that is that is different that is different when we talk about automated underlay that is only when we are doing the press deployment like you know the greenfield deployment otherwise no no so if you are deploying a let's say for example if you are deploying a branch uh, uh, if you are deploying a branch uh, like a completely fresh completely you know greenfield deployment that is let's say but then we can leverage that you know automated underlay facilities and the underlay network can be built automatically otherwise no mm -hmm. the bike at the time of migration we have to do the things as per our requirement mm -hmm. right if you want to migrate from the traditional for example OS, OS, ospf to isis or aigrp to isis because that's what they have recommended we have to do it ourselves dna center will not be able to help you on that yeah sure thank you okay uh, we will talk about uh, we'll talk about how the underlay uh, will you know uh, communicate with the overlay how the network is going to be built that that is going to be dedicatedly discussed in this uh, uh, next chapter of uh, network layer is the network layer. We'll, we'll we'll see how that happens just to give you the idea just since you have asked just to give you the idea let's say you have an underlay network running in your infrastructure let's say you already have an underlay network. Uh, what, do, what do you mean by underlay? Let's say in your company, in your production environment, you already have routers and switches, right? Let's say you already have routers and switches. You have already used uh, that two tier or three tier networking model, design model, and you have built either uh, access uh, distribution and core, or you have you might have gone for a two tier model where we have just access layer and one core distribution layer. You know, it doesn't matter which one you have gone for. But let's say you have built your underlay network and let's say you already have the reachability between all the devices. All you need to do to create an overlay network, all you need to do is just go onto the site. For example, let's say, for example, on this site, and all you need to do is to just click on the device and enable. Once you click on that device, just enable these rules, which we will talk about later on. Just enable these rules click on add button once click on add button and once you do that the dna center once you click on this deploy the dna center in backend is automatically going to deploy the necessary configuration to build that overlay network you don't need to worry about it you do not need to do any configuration of the overlay uh, tunnels such as lisp such as vxlan no you don't need to do that it will happen it will happen completely in an automated fashion all you need to do is to understand the rules on the of the devices and just enable the rules onto the onto the devices onto the fabric and dna center will do all the things for you automatically here, here. done done that device is now an s device done Whatever configuration needed to be pushed on that device, they got pushed. Done. This device will now establish an overlay tunnel with the other S device. Done in backend. 
we will talk more about it later on but you know uh, one all you need to make sure that every device can reach to every other device all you need to make sure that all devices are reachable to the dna center and that's it once you have made sure that in your fabric once you have made sure that the underlay reachability is there the overlay tunnels can be built automatically as per the requirement uh, uh, and the dna center is going to take care of that uh we will need to build the overlay dushant we will discuss about it but we will need to build the overlay otherwise uh we will not be able to get any benefit from this uh, you know uh, soft defined model and let's say some of you guys let's say who are very good in in automation programming right you you have written like thousands of codes some some of you guys have are very well versed let's say in python scripting and all you guys have very good idea let's say about uh, uh, the uh, the uh, you know that apis and everything you can leverage you can use this programmable infrastructure you can use the uh, uh, you know programming capabilities of the dna center you can this dna center can interact with the other third party automation tools with the help of apis application programming infrastructure so with the help of the apis dna center can talk to the third party automation tools if you are good with these things such as api such as python scripting you can write down a code in the python language you can execute that code and that code once it gets executed the in, the configuration is going to be pushed to the dna center and the dna center can push those configuration to the intended devices everything that you can do from this gui from this graphical user interface everything that you can do you can do the same with the help of you can do the same with the help of the apis everything of course we are not going to talk about it but we can do everything that you can do from the gui you can do everything from this uh, what we say api everything and these apis are properly documented and categorized based on your of your requirement for example if you want to get the information about your network use these apis to get the information about the network about the sites about the topology about the device about the client about the sensor about the users applications and everything if you want to for example manage a particular site you want to design a site you can click on site design you can you can use these variety of api uh, or calls you can Uh, you you can send variety of api calls you can get you can use get put post delete operations for that you obviously for that you must know language python you must know uh, programming if you want to do it from the third party automation tool but everything everything that you can do uh, what i'm saying everything that you can do for example you want to update a ip pool you can use this api if you want to delete the ip pool you can use this api you want to get the information api to get the dhcp and dns server information you can use this api you need to be well versed with the apis and the automation uh, tool that you are that you use in your production environment you need to be well versed with the uh, language scripting such as python and you can leverage you can use you can do everything that that this dns center can do from the gui you can do everything since we have the programmatic interfaces the dna center supports the integration with third party automation tool we can you can properly refer to the documentation you can properly refer to these documentation and uh, you can do all those things with the help of apis as well that is what we say that that we have this programmable in infrastructure right so we have we have obvious advantages uh, we have the obvious advantages of using this uh, uh, dna center in our infrastructure so these are the solutions these the sda solution is going to involve these key uh, functions these key uh, components these key elements if i say 
it is going to involve a controller which what we are going to say which what we say as dns intercontroller the one thing that that this will require is called dns intercontroller the other thing that it will require is a policy enforcement engine and it is typically an ice identity services engine other thing that it requires is the uh, combination of underlay and overlay which is what we commonly refer to as fabric and we can use we can leverage since it is a programmable interface infrastructure we can leverage those third party automation tools and we can use apis uh, to actually uh, you know interact with the dns inter solution as well everything that you can do via gui can be done via apis as well all you need to know all you need to do is to have the understanding of these api tools of these uh, language of these uh, you know uh, options that we get on the DNS center. These are the components. These are the like, you know, functional foundation elements that are used in the Cisco SDA solution. Yes, Sumit. No, nothing. Oh, okay. Right. So, what components we need? If you talk about the components, what components we need in uh, for a software-defined networking in a campus area network? We need routers and switches. We need access points and WLCs, just in case if you also want to integrate wireless in your infrastructure. You need identity services engine. You need a DNS center appliance. Routers and switches, access point and WLCs, identity services engine, and the DNS center. Some of these are part of the DNS center, uh, are, are part of the SDA design, and some of them can sit outside the SDA design. So that is that is you know that is a different thing. Like ICE doesn't need to be part of the SDA fabric. Like for example, WLC doesn't need to be part of the SDA fabric. For example, DNAC is it doesn't need to be inside the SDA fabric. It can sit outside the SDA fabric in a data center environment as well. Right. So these are the components. These are the devices that we will require. Some of these devices are physical. Some of these devices are virtual. You can use a mixture of, for example, eyes can be both hardware and a, a hardware device and a virtual, like we can have a, uh, uh, you know, a dedicated box for eyes. What, what, what do we call that? Uh, there's a dedicated, you know, uh, hardware, like we get, we can, we can purchase a, a, a dedicated uh, uh, appliance, appliance. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, security plans. We uh, there's a name for that. I'm, I'm not remembering the name. We'll talk about that. But we can get a dedicated uh, hardware appliance for the ice, or we can deploy it in a virtualized environment. So ice can be like either physical or a virtual solution. WLC can be integrated, for example, in your uh, switches. Can can be like a, a, a hardware device, or it can be uh, like you know uh, we can deploy this on the ESXi on the VM uh, as well. Yeah, UCS, but we call it like, you know, uh, uh, there's a name for that. It is deployed on the UCS server, but, you know, security appliance, something, some, some, something is, some, some name is there for the same. Uh, I'm, I'm not remembering the exact name, actually. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that, but there's a dedicated name for that, uh, that uh, uh, I'm, I'm actually forgetting the name of that hardware appliance that they say. It is based on the UCS, like you know, that is that UCS is more like a server platform, but they ha they have labeled it with a name actually. I'm actually not remembering the name, but uh, I will I will I will let you know. You mean the hardening hardening they do? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 uh, the SNS, 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 Secure Network Service. Yes, yes, exactly. You know, they call it SNS, Secure Net It is a UCS platform, but they call it SNS, Secure Network Server. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, you know, uh, uh, Cisco Secure Network Server, SNS is a more like a hardware appliance where you can deploy these things such as ICE and all. So, it could be both hardware or software. Router switches, as you know, uh, we have to like we have to get these uh, hardware routers and switches. We need to go to the compatibility matrix and we need to see uh, the routers and switches that we have in our production environment. Are they compatible with the SDA solution or not? They have created a website for the same. 
they have created a website from there you can look from there you can check if your uh, hardware that you have in your environment is compatible to be compatible for the dna center or not also remember also remember if your hardware like routers and switches they are not compatible they are not compatible uh, in the dna center uh, in the sda solution still still your dna center can use traditional uh, protocols such as snmp ssh and we can still do we can still get a lot of information on these devices we might still be able to configure a few things on those devices but we will not get full advantage of the software defined access solution in the campus area network but how it will discover normal cdp cdp normal cdp discovery since all these routers and switches that we are going to have these traditional routers and switches they will support the cdp so those oh, devices can mean, be discovered you mean those are cisco devices only correct cisco ha, 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 ha. yeah yeah, okay. yeah. So those are cisco devices yes okay the, the point i'm trying to make that for a device to be fully compatible with the sda solution with the cisco sda solution it needs a, a specific hardware i will talk about that a unified access data plane uadp there is a dedicated hardware this is more like asic you know application is specific integrated circuit that they have on the switch right which is programmable so th there is a thing called uadp unified access data plane i think some earlier platforms that we had like 3850 uh 3850 3860 they they had the uh, uh, earlier version of the uadp uadp mini i think um, if, if i'm not wrong so they had the earlier version of the uadp uh, which was completely programmable so when cisco launched this uh, um, you know sda solution uh, they, they 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 pushed an update they gave an update you can now um, you can download and install that particular operating system onto these uh, uh, 3850 series switches and it is going to enable the functionality which is required for the SDA solution, like VXLAN and Lisp thing, those things. So what I'm saying that these hardwares that we are going to have, like these routers and switches that we are going to have, uh, especially these switches that we are going to have, um, they need a dedicated hardware uh, called UADP, Unified Access Data Plane. If this dedicated hardware is not present, your device will not be fully compatible your device will not be considered as a fully compatible device with the SDA solution. Of, uh, yes, yes, uh, licensing will be required as well, of course, like you need to have licenses as well, uh, the DNA license, DNA Advantage, DNA Premier, we have essential, we have essential Advantage and Premier, we have three licensing tiers, we need to have a DNA license uh, on the devices as well, we'll talk about that in detail as well. Uh, which licenses uh, used for the fabric and uh, enterprise network? Uh, the features vary. The features vary based on the type of license that you are going to have. So, but at, in a typical environment, the advantage license is going to be sufficient. Like, you know, DNA advantage license is going to be very much sufficient for, uh, you know, uh, uh, creating the fabric, defining the VNs and everything. Advantage license is enough. Uh, let's say you are not going to uh, deploy the dna center in your environment let's say you are just going to have a traditional yeah, network yeah. still you can go for yeah. this uh, like you know at least essential license like the basic basic functionality so that you can discover but you will not be able to do any advanced things such as like uh, uh, fabric creation and all those things you will not be able to do if you do not have like for example the uh, advantage license okay but in the fresh environment uh, when i uh, deployed the enterprise network through the DNA, uh, uh -huh. is the automatically essential license are available in DNA? That is, uh, the essential license will, see, uh, the licensing has to be uh, confirmed when you purchase the device, right? So when you are making an order uh, yeah. on the on the, on the the portal, such as CCW portal or somewhere uh, from, 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 some, sir, from some partner site, for example, at that time, you are going to opt for the particular license. And once you get the device, when the device gets connected to the, to the, you know, Cisco PNP portal and all, from there it can verify the license information, and the device is device will get the license as per that. 
right so if your device is not having the proper license the functionalities are going to be limited but your device will still be functional it's not like without the license it will not work it will work but the functionalities are going to be limited it is going to verify the license uh, from your account from your, you know uh, cisco smart licensing and everything that they have done okay so can i use uh, any third party identity service in an or a radius uh, server uh can you can it? use it but uh, uh the, you have the option to add the additional triple a mm -hmm. servers till they support that uh, uh, like okay. radius and tacax it, it should work fine okay uh but uh, i think uh, no i think not because yeah, because the point is when you go to the compatibility metrics na you do not see any other vendor so i uh, i have not practically deployed it like any other vendor i have i'm, I'm still using the cisco ice i do not think it will work because they have strictly said that if you are using this version of the dns center this version of the ic should have in your in your environment so uh, that has to be tested out but i'm i'm really sure that it it will not work i think it will work maybe but, but the compatibility matrix like doesn't say like, if you have the support of the protocol tacax and radius it should work but you have to test it out because uh, because i see in dnac uh, two uh -huh. options are available one is the ice and uh, one is the radius so if i select the radius okay. option okay. so that too i ha uh, that that is going to be the uh, server that is okay but how you are going to integrate the ice that is that is the main problem you know there is a tab here so to be able to use that to be able to use that thing that you are saying right to be able to use that thing this yes, radius right. tacax right to be able yes, to right. use that thing you are getting these options why are you getting these options you are getting these options only oh, yeah. because because actually your dna center is integrated with ice right so if you go right. here under the settings authentication and policy server first of all here you have to integrate the ice right so if if you are using like a dedicated triple a server it will work as well but uh, they recommend that you go for the uh, the particular ice version so that you get more functionalities from there so you can use these these triple a servers as well but if if you can add if you can add a triple a server if you want to add a dedicated triple a server you can add it from here you want to add the ice the ice has to be there Uh, from the ice has to be matched the version of the ice has to match from the compatibility matrix and all so i think you can use it but again you have to test it out since they have the option i think like it should work because radius is of course like a protocol that can be used everywhere so it should work in that case but ice version has to be checked okay um sir i had a question yes. um yes. are there any specific Cisco devices that you should use in SDA, like in ACI, you only have to use Nexus nine thousand devices as leaves or spines. Um, so do you yes, have yes, here also, here also the same. Like they have models, they have specific models that you have to, uh, you know, either purchase or you have to have those models. Uh, then only you will get the benefits of the uh, SDA in your environment. Okay, so when you use so, those devices, hmm. they come with those uh, self-assigned certificates, right? Please, yeah, uh, those please certificates, sign. licenses, and everything. Once you are placing the order for those devices, the license has to mm -hmm. be opted as well. And once you mm -hmm. add on those devices into your fabric, once they get the reachability to the internet and all, the the, mm -hmm. the licenses has to be verified. And once the licenses got verified, then you will get the full functionality of the uh, SDA, like the the fabric and everything, the VNs and everything. Okay. Uh, what uh, devices are you supposed to use here, or are you covering that later? Uh, we will we will cover that later on. But okay. just to give you the idea, like we have uh, different different switches. Like these are the devices. For example, like at least nine K three switches, three K, four K, six K. These are the switches that are you know uh, supported in still uh, DSDA infrastructure. They have already created a a website for the same where we can check uh, if your device is compatible with the SDA solution. Mm -hmm. We will be covering that. We'll be covering. Okay. That. Okay. 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 thank you right a cdp they can use to discover the directly connected so uh, th there is a very good concept of this we'll talk about that later on but cdp they can use the cdp to discover the devices and uh, once they once let's say for example the dna center has discovered this device from this device it will, it will discover to this device from this device it will discover this device from this device it will 
jump to this device and discover the other devices. So eventually it will be able to get the information about the entire topology without any problem. Right, so when it comes to the devices, when it comes to the uh, the components, these are the components that we typically see in the SDA environment. So these, these are, for example, switches. These are, for example, routers, fabric enabled WLC, ICE, DNS center, access points, all these things are part of the SDA solution. Protocols, any IGP to make the reachability between all these devices, to make the reachability from these devices to the ICE, to the DNS center here. Any IGP, any IGP you can use, any IGP you can use, uh, but Cisco recommends that you use ISIS. As per the Cisco recommendation, you should use ISIS, but you can use uh, like actually in practical, you can use any device, any IGP protocol in your in your environment. Why they say that? Why they say that use ISIS? Uh, they say that use ISIS because this is what uh, a Cisco TAC team is supposed to see when you, for example, uh, ask them for any uh, troubleshooting related thing uh, in the DNA center in this as the solution. Well, it's like they expect to see, they expect to see uh, ISIS running as the underlay protocol uh, when doing the troubleshooting and all. So they recommend that you go for the, this is what the DNA center will use in the things such as LAN automation. So they recommend that you also, if you are, if you are going for a, a greenfield deployment uh, and you are going to configure the underlay network all by yourself, they recommend that you go for ISIS because that is what DNA center will use. That is what uh, the, uh, the, for example, Cisco tag team is supposed, uh, they, they are trained for the same, uh, on the same, like on, on, on that. Right? So any IGP, literally any IGP will work. See, at the end, all that matters is the reachability. You have your switches reachable to each other. You have your switches reachable to the DNA center. You have your switches reachable to the eyes and that's it. But then let's say you want to deploy a new device. You want to device, you want to deploy a, a couple of new devices, right? And you want to leverage that LAN automation feature to automatically discover these devices to configure the protocol, make the reachability and everything. So if you do that, DNA center is going to use ISIS for that purpose. And here you are running OSPF. Here you are running EIGRP. So how the communication will happen between the EIGRP and OSPF. Manual intervention will be required in that case. You might need to perform the redistribution and all manually onto that device. Right. So they, they, they recommend they recommend that you go for the ISIS, but it is not a hard fast rule that you have to go for the ISIS protocol. Uh, no Dushant, uh, instead of CDP, we can just use IP address range as well. Just IP address to discover the devices as well. Not CDP is not that mandatory actually. It's our choice to use either CDP or the IP address to discover the devices. VXLAN is a protocol that will be used to perform data plane encapsulation. When the traffic moves from one device to other device, it will be encapsulated with a protocol called VXLAN. So VXLAN protocol will be required at the data plane. LISP protocol, locator ID separation protocol will be required at something called control plane. And Cisco Trust SEC, CTS will be required for the policy plane. Right? So these are the protocols. Uh, these are the protocols that you are typically expected to see in your SDA deployment. Uh, ISIS protocol, preferably, uh, otherwise you can use any IGP, VXLAN at the data plane, LISP at the control plane, and CT or Cisco Trust Tech at the policy plane. We'll talk about in detail, we'll talk in detail about like VXLAN, LISP, why they go for the VXLAN, why they go for the LISP, how LISP operates, how VXLAN operates. We'll talk in more detail about that uh, later on. At least not uh, uh, like uh, 
not that service provider level list, not service provider level or the DC level VX LAN. We'll talk like only that much, which is useful for our SDA deployment, right? We are not going to go through the entire list or entire VX LAN. And when it comes to the policy deployment, as you know, we have identity services engine eyes uh, at the policy plane. Cisco Trust Sec uh, is, is what we use at the uh, policy plane to ensure the policies are configured on these switches. Right? Fine. What else? So uh, overall, overall, just to summarize, building on the foundation of industry leading capabilities, Cisco SDA can now deliver business driven use cases that realize the promise of digital enterprise while reducing the overall total cost of the ownership. So it says that uh, uh, like the Cisco SDA solution is built around the concept of intent-based networking, where the uh, user, where the administrator is supposed to define their intent and the DNS center, the appliance, the hardware appliance that we have, or the uh, the controller that we have in this deployment is going to take the intent of the, of the, of the network engineer, and it is going to configure those intent onto the devices. And at, at first, it might sound that it is going to cost you a lot. You need to purchase new devices. You need to purchase the DNS enter. You need to purchase the license. At first, it would look like that it is uh, a lot of a, a very costly solution, which it is actually. But in a longer run, in a longer time period, since you are spending less money on the on the on the like, for example, like troubleshooting and everything, your network is not down for that much longer time period. Based on all those things, you can say that in a longer run, in a longer time period, the overall total cost of the ownership is going to be significantly low. In general, in general, we get these benefits in our SDA network. Increased visibility, I have already shown you the graphical user interface of the DNS center, and we have already seen what things are visible there. We can um, we can check the information about the network. We can check the information about the device. We can check the information about the user. We can check the information about uh, the applications as well. So there is a very there, there is increased visibility um, of our network uh, that uh, we can uh, analyze. We can see with the help of that DNS center appliance. We can determine, we can create, we can apply, and we can monitor different different network policies from this policy dashboard. We can create the policies for the application. We can create the policies for uh, traffic copy. We can, for the copying for copying the traffic traffic span, R span, and those things. We can create the policies based on scalable group. We can create the policies based on IP addresses. We can get the analytics information from the endpoints as well. So everything regarding the policy, everything regarding the policy can be done uh, or can be seen uh, from one centralized point as well. We can determine, we can create, we can apply, and we can monitor different, different network policies that we have applied in our infrastructure. We can go for this zero trust security for the workplace where we do not trust the device explicitly uh, once it uh, joins the uh, network. Like if let's say, for example, a user brings their own laptop and, you know, they try to connect to uh, our one of the switch uh, based on the credentials that the user is going to enter, the user is going to be assigned a particular, let's say, for example, is tag or the user will be made part of a particular uh, VRF and whatever policies are applied for that particular user will be there uh, throughout the uh, campus area network. So zero trust security for the workplace, like uh, all the devices that we are going to have in our uh, production environment, um, like we are we are not trusting all those devices uh, to be like hundred percent secure, and uh, like we are enforcing the policies to uh, make sure that only legitimate devices can uh, be made part of this uh, campus environment. User can roam. User can move, user can roam from one place to other place while still being connected to the same Wi-Fi network, for example. Like we can accommodate facilities such as roaming and everything uh, for, the, for the user mobility purpose. 
at the moment user has connected itself on a floor number one switch number one and suddenly the user has roamed a user has moved to floor number four a switch number three once the user connects itself on the floor number four a switch number three uh, once the user provides its credential same set of policies will be applied for the user no matter where that user has uh, connected itself so user can move a user can roam from one place to another place without any problem uh, we can uh, have seamless roaming facilities uh, in our uh, like you know wireless deployment for example and the same set of policies will be applied for the user no matter where uh, it is connected we can accommodate we can uh, uh, yes sir so this feature is only for the wireless uh, your audio is very very low just in case is it better now ha yeah yeah it is it is okay so this policies are which you just spoke is related to the wireless correct a uh, wireless wired only... wired booth like and like we can we can have a same policy for the user no matter if the user okay. is connected with the wireless network or the wired network mm -hmm. okay like for so like for example to the switch uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. He connect to one of the switch in third floor. Once uh -huh. he move to the fifth floor, so same policy uh -huh. will and exactly. will be applied. Exactly. In that exactly. Okay. Exactly. 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 That's what we mean by like user mobility. That the user, no matter where it is connecting, maybe the user is connecting via wireless. Maybe the user is connecting via wired network. Once the user is properly authenticated, then only the user will be allowed the access to the network. And for the authentication authorization, whatever policies we have enforced. those policies will remain same on this switch and on this switch sure thank you right hey so just actually i am very new to this technology i am no 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 problem no problem no so problem. i may ask lot of question may may no issues as long as as long as, as, long as the technology voice, gets network, right? yeah. no 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 problem as long as the doubts gets clear there is no problem yeah. thank you Uh, now we can define the policies for guest user access for example we have we have uh, a wifi you know and let's say that wireless network is dedicated for the guest user so whenever a user comes let's say a uh, user is not part of our network the user is just a guest he has come to our premises and uh, he has some work to do and also uh, you know user has just connected uh, to our wifi network and we have identified that this user has connected to a guest wifi network i can define a separate set of policies for our guest users that as for example we can prevent them even though they are connected to our our wifi network but they will not be allowed to uh, connect they will not be allowed to talk with the corporate users like we can create the policies in such a way that the guest users cannot communicate with the corporate users we can limit for example we can uh, make the policies in such a way that uh, whatever traffic these guest users are uh, accessing they, this is going to be limited like we can define the policies for lim uh, limit the rate at which they are accessing the traffic and all basically guest access can be accommodated like basically we can uh, ensure we can have the guest access uh, in our sda solution as well we can integrate different different uh, type of uh, internet of things devices iot devices as long as those devices are uh, capable of coming to the network like capable of uh, participating in the network uh, we can we can integrate those iot devices like cameras and uh, uh, sensors and everything as well in our sd solution we can create a different set of policies for those iot uh, sensors or iot devices as well that for example like uh, these iot devices are not uh, allowed to talk uh, uh, with the guest users these are only allowed to talk with the corporate users like corporate users can have the access to those iot devices but not the guest users and all we can integrate the internet of things uh, iot in our uh, campus area network and that can be managed in a limited amount from the dns center as well we can create the policies and everything for those as well 
I don't need to tell you about monitoring and troubleshooting now because I have shown you that practically. I can I can do all the monitoring from that centralized DNS inter appliance. And uh, as when it comes to like troubleshooting, we can troubleshoot uh, the network. We have seen that uh, DNS Center can use the artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities, machine reasoning capabilities uh, to not only analyze the problem, but also suggest some solution for the same. We can integrate with the help of like, for example, here in the previous diagram, we can integrate our data center, we can integrate our campus area network, or we, if we have, for example, uh, added a branch, a data center on the cloud, all those things, all those uh, sites can be integrated uh, with the help of this uh, SDA solution as well. And what they are planning to do, right? They are planning to make the DNS center as a centralized uh, point of control for both LAN and WAN. Like we can integrate uh, like SD-WAN controller such as vManage. We can integrate, we can add the information about the vManage on the DNS center. So DNS center can talk to the vManage with the help of APIs as well. So let's say, for example, we want to make some changes on the router, you know, which is typically done by a as the WAN controller called vManage. So I can still, I will be able to do those changes from the DNS center as well, because the DNS center can push the instruction to the vManage based on those APIs. They were working on that for a very long time and they actually have that right here they actually have integrated like in this external services. We can not only integrate the ICE identity services, Indian and AAA servers. We can also integrate vManage. What is vManage? vManage is a centralized controller. Same thing that we have here in the name of DNS Center for the SDA solution. Same thing we have in our SD-WAN solution in the name of, like with the name of vManage. vManage is a centralized management plane for the uh, WAN edge router in your wide area network. So your DNS center can talk to the vManage based on the credentials that you have entered. Right. So whatever, let's say, for example, you want, you might want to, you want to make some changes to a particular router. You know, I am those changes need to be done by the vManage. We can, since the integration is done between the DNS center and the vManage, the DNS center can become a centralized point of control for both LAN and WAN devices. However, vManage is still, it, it has its own graphical user interface. From there, we can do a lot of things as well. So it is a different entity. It is a complete different entity, but can be integrated with the DNS center as well so that uh, everything can be managed from one single point from one DNS center appliance. Right? We can integrate traditional branches with the SDA branches. We can integrate our uh, like, you know, non SDA sites with the SDA site. We can integrate like SD WAN with SDA. All the type of integration is actually uh, possible uh, in this uh, SDA solution offered by Cisco. Right? So these are some advantages. These are some benefits that you see. And uh, as our course progresses, you will notice a lot more advantages of the DNA Center. Uh, you will see how easy it is to deploy uh, things such as quality of service in our production environment. A complex configuration of quality of service can be pushed very easily with some few steps. A complex uh, access control list uh, need not to be configured now. That thing can be done uh, purely based on such as scalable groups and everything. Right. So we have uh, we have like a lot of benefits of uh, the uh, SDA in our campus area network. Uh, enhanced endpoint again the same thing. Now I'm just going to read it. So SDA uh, Cisco Software Defined Access it. Uh, gives us the enhanced endpoint visibility by using advanced analytics for user and device identification and profiling. We can use the DNA Center Assurance Dashboard to get all the information about the device and the user. Uh, and that complete information can be seen in, in, in one central point, one single point. 
It employs artificial intelligence and machine learning technique to classify similar endpoints into a logical group. And with the help of the same artificial intelligence and machine learning, it can also suggest the actions for uh, the given problems um, as well. We can define effective access policies with the help of a thorough analysis of the traffic flow between the endpoint groups. Enforcing these policies through the network infrastructure using a simple uh, graphical interface mode, like the policy application, the, apply, uh, the applying the policies now can be done uh, using the graphical user interface, not the uh, command line interface. We can create a virtual overlay network. We can create a virtual overlay network to segment both wired and wireless network uniformly and separate the unrelated traffic to provide right level of access to the endpoint, boosting compliance and reducing the business risks. We can, we can actually uh, uh, set up the rules. We can define, we can create our virtual network. We can create that uh, uh, you know, logical overlay network uh, on the top of that underlay uh, based on our requirement. And we can separate our uh, you know, uh, endpoint traffic, for example, with the user traffic so that uh, uh, they do not uh, uh, overlap, they do not uh, collide with each other as well. Exchange operating policy, exchange operating uh, policies and ensure consistency by utilizing Cisco intent based networking, multi domain architecture for enforcement throughout the access WAN and multi cloud data center network. Like we, the policies that we are going to uh, configure can be applied on a campus area network, and the policies for the wide area network environment can also be applied using the vManage um, as well. So the policies can be exchanged to ensure the consistency. And uh, that can be done using the Cisco Intent based networking uh, solution where the, uh, where the uh, LAN, WAN, and the data center network is all connected with the help of software defined networking in this manner. Right? So these are some, some of the features of, uh, you know, SDA. Cisco SDA gives IT time back by automatically reducing the time it takes to manage and secure the network and improving the overall end user experience. You save approximately 67% uh, of time in uh, provisioning the devices, 80% less time to ensure the resolution uh, return off. As per them, as per them, the five year return off investment is going to be approximately 462%. Not on a shorter term, not on a shorter run, but in a longer run. For example, in a five year, uh, if, if, I, if we calculate the five year return off uh, uh, investment, like at this point, you invested a lot of money in the SDA solution. And after five years, you will get approximately like 400, as per them, 462% um, return on the investments. Like you will save a lot of money uh, as compared to the traditional infrastructure that you had. Of course, it might not be that big number, but of overall, uh, you know, uh, overall, if you, if, you, if you compute like overall the return on this investment is going to be comparatively high than the traditional one. 48% reduction in the impact of security breaches, 45% uh, reduced total cost of operation, 49% more efficient uh, network management stuff. Like we do not need a lot of, we do not need like 10 users. We do not need like 50 network engineers to manage our uh, 30, 40 branches. We just need like 10, 15 people well versed with the DNS enter technology, with well versed with the SDA technology, and they will be able to manage those 30, 40 sites very efficiently without any problem. And that is where that cost cutting and everything comes into the picture. That is where this five year return of investment comes into the picture actually. So we are getting a lot of advantages. We are getting a lot of advantages by deploying this DNS enter. Uh, by this by deploying this SDF solution in our campus area network. And migration is still supported. You can migrate. Like we'll talk about that, but we can migrate. We'll talk about that later on. But we can migrate. If you have existing infrastructure, we can migrate. You can migrate their existing infrastructure to simplicity, automation, and security that SD offers. And we can do that with minimum disruption uh, to the users and connected devices. We can migrate the existing infrastructure. The, this is what we call brownfield deployment, where your infrastructure is already there. And we can we want to migrate from the traditional to the software-defined networking. 
So that can be done as well. You had the existing infrastructure. You had you can create uh, the endpoint and policies. You can create you can do the segmentation. Like basically, you can you can you can migrate the existing infrastructure, or you can uh, deploy from fresh. You can deploy the as the solution from the scratch uh, as well. Both have their own advantages and disadvantages. Either new networks can be deployed completely on the SDA solution or your existing infrastructure can be migrated from the traditional to the SDA infrastructure uh, to get full SDA capabilities in your campus area uh, network. We will talk about some migration techniques later on. We will talk about like how the migration happens later on, but migration can be done uh, for the existing infrastructure to the SDA uh, network as well. And uh, this is the this is the overview. This is like uh, overview of whatever we have covered so far. Right, we'll talk about that later on. Like the SDA solution provides uh, deep visibility to the endpoints, user application. We can create group-based access policy. We can create that consistent policy throughout the network. And we'll talk about that later on. So uh, uh, this is uh, this is from where we will we will we'll continue tomorrow. Uh, but overall, I have I have I have given you the idea like uh, what is this as the solution of components are used, and we will now dig in detail of these components throughout our classes, and we will see what devices actually are used in the as the solution. One by one, we will explore everything uh, from the scratch. This is again this is just the introduction of the uh, as the solution that is offered by Cisco.